welcome welcome to our new stream okay we have to watch Sneko, Abu Taimiya and Makka and we will dive into this okay it's it's time to oh Sneko did Umrah bro complete Umrah yeah, I think so. It's gonna stay falling. So you make tuck that in. So to do umrah yet, chai. So as long as that's tucked in, we we'll sort of. That's good enough. So he did two times. Let's walk around for a bit, come on. Oh, there's there's headphones for you. Um, If you don't know if I'm actually gonna smack you. Okay, ready? Really beautiful, and you have a great person. I want them. I really want them to see the, this beautiful view. No, keep the camera. Keep the camera. Oh, right, right. It's effing. Is is the thing connected? Or? Okay. I think we maybe we just don't move around too much. Come back. Well, I'll just do the intro. Let me stand over here. I got to tweet it out and everything. Can they see the view? I can see. Okay, so, salam alaikum everybody. Ramadan Mubarak. I'm glad to be back. We're here live in Mecca. A lot of people, they like to say, I'm in the Mecca of NBA. I'm in the Mecca of UFC. We're in the Mecca of Mecca. We're in the Mecca of the world. So, it's good to be back here. We were here for Juma last week, but it, I didn't get to finish my Umrah, so we're, we're finishing it today. Inshallah, after the, um, the podcast of Abu Tania. and it's been it's been a difficult Ramadan so far. But first time fasting, getting all the prayers in, making sure I don't miss anything. Um, I've been wanting to interview Abu Tania again since since last time I interviewed him the day after my Umrah last November for my first Umrah, and it was it was a great podcast. We talked for three hours straight. Um, he's really insightful. He's one of the the top Islamic scholars in the world. I've been really looking, for, it's been hard to schedule with him because he's super busy, he's always on Umrah trips, he's always traveling the world, he's always giving speeches, he's always like guiding a, a group, but there's a lot, he's with a, a lot of good guys here, a bunch of Australian, Lebanese people, they look like rugby players, they all have shaved heads right now because they just finished Umrah, they're good guys. And yeah, we'll make sure that, that we get some good conversation and make sure that you guys ask questions today uh, to help me out in the chat, you know, if you want to... Um, Oh, and also projectifshard.org slash Nico, where we're giving away $2. Where every $2 feeds one person. So I think so far we're at $20,000. $20,000. So we've already fed 10,000 people. MashaAllah. We fed 10,000 people, brother. What's your name? Salaam alaikum. What's your name, bro? That's the magic. What's your name? Oh, Faisal. Faisal. Nice to meet you, bro. Nice to meet you, Faisal. We fed uh, 10,000 people already. So projectifshard.org slash Nico. If you want to contribute, if you want to cleanse your wealth, if you want to feed somebody. And then tomorrow... Late tonight, we're going to Dubai, inshallah. So anybody who's in Dubai, send me a DM. I want to make sure we get some good streams out there. We have a lot of good things lined up. But I want to make sure that it, that's really exciting trip. You know, it's not just, not just podcasts. Some people in the community are complaining like, oh, it's boring, it's boring. If you want loud, twerking, pimping, gambling content, go watch it. It's out there. If you don't like the content that we're doing here, there's so much other, there's hours and hours of content on the internet. But these are some of the most educational and some of the most powerful streams that we've been doing so far. I think the UK trip with all the Dawah guys in one place, I think that that was extremely effective. I was really happy about that. Um, wait, hope the, where's the other mic? Is everything good? I, I don't have any signal here. I can't even read the chat. Hey, Sneak, uh... Also, the so the network, bro. Just keep talking and hope it's good. Maybe maybe God will get me. Um, I want to continue this Ramadan trip. You know, it's we're not even halfway through yet, and I think it's been really effective. I think it's been been very positive. And so after this month, you'll we'll, you'll go back. We'll go back to the normie content. We'll go back to the screaming and Shaitan land in Miami and LA. We'll go back to that world and that energy. But when I'm here, when I'm in Mecca, I'm at peace. And this is the only place that I've really found and seen true peace with my own eyes. That's why I love coming back here so much. I highly recommend it for all the Muslims in the world that, uh, that you come to this place and that you see what actual unity is in a city of people that all believe in God at the same time and all want to do one thing but be a servant to God. It's very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. 
And so when Ramadan's over, we'll go back to we'll go back to reality. It's too bad that I don't get to live here all the time and get to spend my whole life here, but it's it's all a balance. But I'm making sure to get my prayers in and that the charities that we're running are, are effective. So, alhamdulillah, I'm glad to be back here in Mecca. Let's go say hi to Abu Tamiya. Do you know the, the Wi-Fi here? It's free. It's free? Fairmont? Yeah. Okay. But then you have to click it again when you get email address. Just put a fake email, right? Thank you. I feel my Abu Tamiya Warner. Do you, do you mind? Uh, yeah, if you, if you want to sit down over here. Should we go sit yeah, down? Yeah. All right. Just it should be good, thank you. Have a seat. Salam alaikum, Abu Tamiya. Wa alaikum, salam. <laughs> Glad to be back, brother. If you need anything, let me know. has it been? Two months? Since the last time we met? I think three or four. I think it's four. It's, it flew by, huh? Yeah. It flew by. If you could um, hold this. You can put it on top of the camera, actually. And maybe, um... You get if you find it. Huh? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me make a post and everything. Do you want some... You don't drink coffee, I remember. No, no, I'm not coffee. Yeah. Before we really get cooking, I just want to make sure all the connection... Well, one one of the sheikhs in, in Medina once said... I was sitting with him, right? His name is Sheikh Abdurrahman al Rashidan, very well known. He reads on uh, uh, one of the great scholars of hadith over there, right, for years. And he tried to put the coffee in front of me. I was like, Sheikh, I'm not a coffee guy. He yeah. said, You've been deprived. Because huh? you've been deprived of the paradise of this world. Mm. I was like, Sheikh, no, no. that's not my thing. How's Ramadan been? You strike me as somebody who uh, fasting is not difficult at all. I feel like you're the type of guy that. That's practicing Ramadan 24 7. What do you mean? I don't eat the whole day, you mean? You don't seem like you eat much. Like normally when I lead the Taraweeh, because generally speaking, throughout Ramadan I lead every night. Yeah. Right? I can't eat. If I eat too much, I'm going to have issues while I'm leading the people, right? Uh huh. Uh, so uh, I would either have to have it after the Taraweeh, right? Or I'll just end up having a, a mixture of. Iftar and Sihur at the same time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you explain what Taraweeh is for the... We just did a, a whole bunch of prayers okay, so after Isha. What is Taraweeh? So Taraweeh is the supererogatory, voluntary prayer that we pray in the month of Ramadan to train us to be individuals who stand in the night throughout the year. Right? Because from the virtuous acts uh, that is extremely beloved to Allah is that you pray throughout the night. It is the most virtuous, superior... Okay. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, throughout the night from the supererogatory voluntary prayers that we would normally offer, right? So, uh, as I always mention in the month of Ramadan, we're trying to train ourselves to become better Muslims outside the month of Ramadan. Right. Right, we're not just... That's why I'm saying you strike me as someone who's practicing Ramadan 24-7. No, 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 Like no. all 365 they, they, days a year. May Allah make us from them. We strive, we try, our Allah is better, we put the effort in. We always want to do better, right? Uh, we can't ever be people who settle for uh, whatever we've been doing. Can I, right? can I raise your microphone a little yeah, higher? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Maybe just clip it up higher close to your mouth. Mm. Guys, don't get mad at me for going on my phone. I'm just making sure everything's good and the post is up. I'm not texting uh, anybody right now. But... I see that, don't worry. Yeah, okay. okay. Huh? They get angry because they really want me to, to, to pay attention. No, 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 no. But it, it was a great first podcast that we had. It, it, was, it was really informational and it was effective. I think it was really good dawah. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you something. I'm like here in Saudi, a lot of people watched it. A lot of people watched it. A lot of people would come up to me and say, like, I really benefited from it. You know, it helped me fix a couple of things in my life. Things fell into perspective. And then they would always ask, is Sneeko actually genuinely Muslim? Huh? Yeah, is Sneeko a grifter? <laughs> yeah. Or is he just trying to get the clout? Of course, we can only uh, base things based on what is apparent. I don't know what's inside of your heart. For those who are asking or having this thought, is he still Muslim? He just prayed the whole Taraweeh for me, with me, right? From the beginning all the way till... It's a lot. Uh, it's then. like it's a lot of uh, Quran yeah. recitations. So uh, if you guys want to enter into his heart, 
normally would always hear uh, when someone says something crazy online, bro, you don't know what's in his heart. But when you and others became Muslim, oh, it's probably not Muslim. And I think that's a little bit, you know, contradictory. It's not right. That's what people are asking you all the time. They're asking, yeah. is Sneeko actually Muslim? No, but just this whole online, uh, you know, wave that we see every now and again when someone says something crazy, people are, you know, going out their way to defend that person for whatever he said, even though he's absolutely crazy. But when there are people like yourself, and I remember also when uh, Andrew Tate became Muslim, people were saying the exact same thing, oh, it's fake. Of course, we can't do anything more than what is apparent. We can't go off with anything other than that. Here's, I've been saying? thinking about this a lot, especially since yeah. the, our podcast is like, the people saying, Sneeko's a fake Muslim, or like, Andrew Tate's a fake Muslim. It's like, even if we were faking it, isn't it still good for the world? It's like, if you are, say, if I'm faking praying, I'm faking giving charity to Project Iftar, I'm faking having faith in my heart and, you know, staying away from gambling, staying away from zina, staying away from all this, from all the haram, but it's still fake. It's still good for the world. It's still a net positive for everything. I'm going to tell you something crazy. The Prophet, you, the peace and blessing be upon him, the hypocrites. Verses would come down. You actually read the verses today, Surah Tawbah. Verses would come down exposing the hypocrites. Their traits would be mentioned, right? Only then the Messenger وسلم, was able to distinguish between who was real and who wasn't, right? But before that, he would treat them, right? No different to the rest of the Muslims. Does that make sense? So we haven't been instructed to judge what's inside of people's hearts. That's not something that we can really comment on. All we can go off with is that which is apparent. I look at you, you've taken the shahada, that's it, right? And the open uh, actions that an individual does, that's all we can go off with. Unless he utters it with his tongue, or he begins to now do certain things with his limbs that are in contrary with Islam, only then we have a better idea of who this individual actually is. Having said that, everyone's got shortcomings. I've got shortcomings, you've got shortcomings, right? Uh, a lot of brothers have mentioned to me since that time that we met uh, up until now, right? You know, you've made a lot of improvements uh, and there's still so much more that both me and you can improve on, right? And this is our journey to Allah really, right? But no Muslim is perfect. Uh, Islam no Muslim is, perfect, is perfect, but no Muslim will ever be perfect. It's, it's impossible That's for it. a man to be perfect. And I, I think before, when we first met, I, I don't think you had any idea about who I was or like what this was. You're like, oh, some kid just wants to do a podcast, Bro, I'll do it. I'll be honest with you, I was, you know when we was in the hotel and I was giving that reminder to the Makki Masjid Manchester brothers, yeah. right? And that group, you walked in, when you took the camera and started recording, or the cameraman, right? Uh, I thought you wanted to record it and then upload it later on. You didn't know it was live? I had no idea that it was live. <laughs> Absolutely no idea. <laughs> As we're recording, I can hear your phone hear, going off. A lot of people are messaging me. I'm going onto WhatsApp and I just see a whole lot of messages. And then after that, my phone just blew up. Everyone's like, you know, I don't think, you know, this, that. And yeah, yeah. So, Alhamdulillah, you know, uh, I think it was a good discussion that we had. A lot of people benefited from it. Yeah, they did. What and, have you uh, been up to since last time? So I currently live in Riyadh. I'm doing my master's here in fiqh. So I've been here ever since. Right? At the time we were in Medina because I was waiting to start, so Alhamdulillah. Oh, we've had a Medina now Mecca, the two yeah, holy cities. Yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah. 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 And also I must say, Wallahi, I was thinking about it earlier, the fact that you've come here twice in the space of a week and a half, I think it was. It was your last Jummah, two Jummahs in a row. Both. Actually, every Jummah this Ramadan Habibi, so far, Alhamdulillah. There are people that live here in Mecca, they barely ever come to the Haram. Why? Because I would be here all day. Here, because coming here is an invitation. To be able to do Umrah, to be able to do Hajj, the Messenger, may peace and blessing be upon him, he told us, right? They are Wafdullah. They are the guests of Allah. Allah Azza wa Jal invites them. I've come across a lot of people, I've sat with some people inside of the Haram, you know, the Prophet's Masjid, may peace and blessing be upon him. And they would say to me, it's the first time in maybe 40 years, and these guys are multi millionaires. What are they doing all day? I don't understand. Okay, like I said, it's an invitation, right? How many friends do you have? How many friends do I have? How many relatives do we have? They never get the opportunity to come here. Even these brothers are sitting here that came from Australia. They will testify when they made the decision to come here, they invited some of their friends. And for one reason or the other, it just didn't happen for them. I'll tell you something more crazy, right? A couple of years ago, as someone who would take people on Hajj, right? We would have people come in on Hajj. Some of them would pay their, uh, their whole package in full, right? Uh, there was even a guy, subhanAllah, he paid for everything. He came all the way to London, Heathrow Airport. 
for some reason or the other, he decided to start drinking at London Heathrow. They refused to let him board the flight. This person wasn't invited by Allah, he wasn't invited by God. Wait, so he was too drunk to enter? Yeah, they, they, no, he was too drunk to get on the flight. And this is someone who made the intention to go for Hajj, imagine that. So if your intentions aren't there, then you're not going to make it here. Yeah, it's, an, it's, it's an invitation. I really believe that. That's why there's so much peace here with thousands of people. You see it on the, the TVs in the hotel room. The, right now, it's so crowded. It's hard to get in here. Even the cameraman Ferris over getting over here it was about an hour late yesterday coming from the airport. It was like going all over. I've never seen it this packed, and I don't think that yeah, maybe Ramadan you have it always packed, man. This is, my, uh, this is the second time in Ramadan that I've been here in my whole life. It's definitely an experience. And that's what the, the prayer is when you're coming, you're supposed to say la bayk. Allahumma la bayk. Like Allah gave me the call and I answer the call. I'm here, oh Allah, I'm coming. I keep getting the call. Allah's blowing on my phone. He, he keeps hitting me. I, ha I have to come back. But you know, I, I actually, I, I agree with what you're saying completely because when Ramadan started, I was planning out, I wanted to do a charity stream where we we're giving money to charity right now at projectiftar.org slash Nico. And at first I was, I was struggling to plan everything out and, and make sure to figure out where you were because I wanted to go collaborate with a lot of Muslim influencers and so I decided... Subhanahu, we were actually meant to be in Riyadh, right? Yeah. But SubhanAllah, Allah decreed that we are doing this podcast here. just right behind the... or right in front of the... The Kaaba, Kaaba. yeah. Oh. MashaAllah. And then last second I decided, you know what, I'm going to go to Mecca. I was going to meet Warner who's here. I'll meet him there and everything will happen. But then all these passport problems happened and Allah told me to be patient because like, I, had to, I had to wait three days. I, I decided I'm going to go, but then passport issues visa issues i couldn't come for three days but i, I bro why decided happened? you know ramadan's the month of patience this is the, the month of becoming a better muslim i didn't let Allah. get to me and i ended up here yeah, I look at it as a boot camp bro it's not fair training camp an institution the month of Ramadan is a lifeline for you now to flip your life around, right? I hear people throw around this time, Ramadan Muslim. <laughs> Ramadan, Ramadan Muslim. Muslim They'll yeah. see a sister walking into the masjid in the month of Ramadan, uh, yani half wearing a hijab. Oh, this girl, she only wears a hijab in the month of Ramadan. No, I think there's two kinds of people. We can maybe categorize the people into two. There are people people who tell themselves as soon as Ramadan finishes on the day of Eid I'm gonna go and do whatever I was doing maybe before the month of Ramadan that's the wrong mindset to enter into the Ramadan with and of course that's problematic right and then you have another person he uses the month of Ramadan as a stepping stone to better himself yes you're still gonna make mistakes after you're not gonna be sinless but this person now has made the decision he has the mindset he has the thought process I'm going to flip my life around. And this is what is expected from everyone. Right? I'll tell you something funny, right? Last year, I've said it a couple of times in a lecture. Last year, I seen on Twitter, or X now, right? A sister posted a screenshot of an interaction she was having with her boyfriend. It said on there that I don't want to see you till Eid. So for 30 days, I don't want to see you. Mm. And everyone is commenting, MashaAllah. She's going to stay away from her boyfriend for 30 days. No, it's not meant to be that. Right, you're meant to get rid of him. Khalas, yani. And everyone's just yeah. clapping and getting excited over that. And No, this is a, a, yani, a flawed mindset of how we should treat the month of Ramadan. <coughs> Let me, right? I, I would make more sense. Are, you, is it, are your hands tired? I can put the camera up on the chair. <coughs> you're fine, you're good. Um, what, what's the How's other? How's the other cameraman? I remember. He's Christian, he can't come here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, how is he doing? He's doing all right? He's doing okay. He's yeah. doing okay. I, I tried to give him Dawah, but he's still, yeah. Yeah, he's still struggling. What was his name again? Uh, Needles. Needles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I right. really liked him last time when I, we had a good interaction. You did? What do you remember of him? Yani, you're talking about the brother that was with us, right? Was <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the white guy. Yeah, the white guy, yeah. 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 I felt a bit sorry for his hands. Uh, Why? He was recording for like what? Four hours. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, luckily, you know what's funny? Because he can't come to Mecca because he's Christian. I met Faris on the plane, coming here. I was like uh, putting out stories, oh, trying to find Allah. a cameraman. Yeah. 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 Allahu Akbar. Why are you You're from the people of Mecca. Inshallah, you come here every day, eh? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
what else should we do as Muslims? You know, I saw some, some people on the internet saying like, this Ramadan doesn't feel like all the other Ramadans. This doesn't feel special. I remember as a Christian, some people would say that during the Christmas season, oh, it doesn't feel like Christmas. What do you say to people that, that for me, it's my first one. It, this is Ramadan season, man. How do you feel? I feel amazing. Yeah. I, fasting has been great. I've rejuvenated. been rejuvenated. Rejuvenated so far. Really nourished. Huh? I'm not looking forward to eat. I, I would. I want to. I'm enjoying this process. But what would you say to the, the people that are not feeling Ramadan, the spiritual? Well, no, it depends actually what you're doing. What is it exactly that you're doing in the month of Ramadan in order for you to feel like that, right? A lot of people think in the month of Ramadan we only stay away from food, drink, and sexual intercourse. Ramadan is so much more than that. Right? We are trained to become individuals who are conscious of God. Individuals who, right, who fear Allah you know, fully with their hearts and then with their limbs. Um, there's even a very powerful statement of one of the companions of the Messenger, the peace and blessings be upon him. He said, when you fast, make sure your ears are fasting. Make sure your eyes are fasting. Make no sure your tongue is fasting. Right? From what? From sins, from lies, it's all sorts, right? These sins that we fall into in the month of Ramadan is only going to hinder our progress. You see what I'm saying? We're meant to stay away from all of that. It's not just food, drink, halas. You know, I've fasted on that day until the next day. No, it's, it's not necessarily like that. Like I said before, it's a boot camp, right? It's an institution for us now to become better Muslims thereafter. So if you're now messing around after you've broken your fast, you're really not, you know, fulfilling the objective of Ramadan. So I can't drink at Eid? Can I have what? No, bro, alcohol? No. Of course not. No, okay. You drink? I can't commit zina no, I, I, during Eid? Okay. Nothing like that at all. Right? Uh, I'm joking, Mother. No. <laughs> you can't do any of that. Whether it's in the month of Ramadan, whether it's outside the month of Ramadan, it's actually more severe for you to do it in a holy place or in a holy time. Like sinning here is a lot different to when you sin back home, for example. It's multiplied just like your prayers yeah, are multiplied. Yeah. So the more virtuous the place is, the greater or the more severe the sin is going to be and also the more rewarding your acts of worship are going to be when the time is virtuous uh, and when also the place is virtuous as well. Mm -hmm. But how do you feel more connected during this month for, for the Muslims that, that aren't feeling... Bro, when you see everyone doing the acts of worship together, right? bro, that, that's very inspiring, honestly. It has a big, there's a vibe to it. Everyone's praying together in the night, fasting in the day, right? I always tell brothers and sisters especially our sisters who struggle with the hijab, right? Um, uh, like if we think about it, isn't it more easier for us to do acts of worship in the month of Ramadan? Like for example yourself, because everyone around you is doing it. You're the sum of the people that you're around. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if the people around you are not doing certain acts of worship, you're going to struggle as well. Does that make sense? I remember even in the first podcast, I remember mentioning this, the man who killed 99. Did I mention it? Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I don't remember. The Prophet, may peace and blessings be upon, us, uh, be upon him, he told us about a man who killed 99. Right? Like he was a bloodthirsty individual, a barbaric person. He used to kill people for fun. Yeah. yeah. Right? Um, and then someone directed him to a monk. And the monk wasn't a knowledgeable individual. Right? So he asked him, is it possible for me to be forgiven? The monk said no. So he ended up killing him as well. And then he asked again, where can I find a person of knowledge? He eventually was directed to a scholar. And the scholar gave him the correct advice. What does that show you? Right? You go to the right people. You don't just go to any random individual to seek Islamic advice. There is, right? Or there, you know, you have to go to a person Students of speciality. Of yeah, you Students don't just go to any random individual to get knowledge. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. today on, on, on TikTok and everywhere, <laughs> Everyone just gets the information from anyone and everyone, right? Right. So anyways, after going to him, he told him, leave where you are, right? This place that you're in, where you're killing people, leave where you are and go to such and such place. Go to so-and-so place. There is a group of people there that worship Allah. Go and worship Allah with them. What is he saying here? Here you're going to struggle because the people around you are going to have a direct influence on you. Over there, you've got people that worship Allah, you're going to find it easier to do so, right? And uh, it helps a lot. Do you find it easier to... You went to LA since the last time I saw you, correct? I went to San Diego. San Diego. California, right? There's a lot of brothers in San Diego. Yeah. Uh, Sheikh Uthman's from there. Yeah. No, I went to the brothers over there that are with Sheikh yeah. Uthman. I don't know, have you ever been to Florida? No, I haven't. I did, when I went to America, the only time that I ever went to America, 
uh, and I'm hoping I get in the future again. Yeah. Uh, I went to eight states in 12 days. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was eight states in 12 days. Florida wasn't one of them. There's almost I no Muslims. last time in Minnesota, which you didn't. Yeah, you wanted to meet. Did you invite me to go to Minnesota? They'll be more than happy to. I don't know. What's in Minnesota? Him, Corn? Uh, white people? No, man, I told you before. It's like Somali Central. Oh, Somali Central, right, right, right. They say the biggest Somali population after Mogadishu, which is the capital of Somalia, is in Minnesota. Wow. Yeah. They, they came there and said, welcome. I'm the captain now. Very welcoming, mashallah. Florida, there's, there's no Muslims at all. So I, I find it difficult to stay on Dean and to stay, you know, to lower my gaze and all these things over there. Would you, would you recommend Muslims stay in the West and try to push the message of God? Or do you recommend that they go to some place Wallahi, where there's more Muslims? I, I honestly believe it depends on the person. It's something that is circumstantial. If someone is able to have that influence around the people, or on the people around him, then it's better for him to be where he's going to be more uh, closer to Allah Azza wa Jalla in that sense, right? However, some, they are the ones that are being influenced all the time, right? He's the product of his environment. Instead of being someone who's able to have an effect on the people around him, he's being affected all the time, so he has to save himself. He has to go where he's able to worship Allah a lot better, more closer to him. So it depends on the person. Right? Like for me being, let's just say, right, uh, moving out of the West and just staying in the East, is that going to be productive for me? I don't think so. I think I can be a lot more productive being around people who need a dawah, impacting their lives and so on and so forth. Do you ever see the criticisms from, since we've been doing these streams, people are criticizing, saying like, the invaders are telling people how to live in the West because, you know, we're wearing thobes and... I thought, I thought uh, we lived in a country where freedom of speech is the core of their values. Right. Right? You're able to do whatever you want. I know there was a lot of Islamophobes having to go at you. Oh, yeah. Maybe... They are today. Also, yeah. yeah, up until this very day. Right? And they're not going to be happy seeing the street. At the end of the day, we're just exercising our right to freely say whatever we want. Right? This is the first commandment. Sah? Yeah. So I don't know why they're getting upset. What happened to liberal yeah. values? Live and let be, do as you wish, right? So, uh, I also liked how you said, um, and actually I was, I was going back and forth with my dad about this. I agree that you said that music is the voice of Satan. I agree completely. You know, one thing that I've cut out 100%, even like now when I scroll on Instagram or something, I hear a song, I, I stop listening to, to the real or whatever, I go to the next. I'm trying to completely deprogram my mind of music. One thing that I've also been noticing is I've been on a lot of car rides, a lot of plane rides, and I don't feel the need to have music, but when I'm in Miami, like if it's silent for five seconds in the car, I turn on a song, I turn on music. Can you, can you explain uh, to the people and also to my dad specifically, because he's like, I love music. Music is like, it uplifts my soul. And I see where a lot of people are talking about that. I think some music's worse than, than others. Obviously hip hop, they put it at a certain frequency in order to get you to dance and be violent. And the lyrics are all pushing you towards drugs and towards zina. Some music, I, I can understand why people think it's uplifting to the soul, but why is music the voice of Satan? Why is music the voice of Satan? So we can maybe look at this issue from a number of angle, uh, angles, right? We as Muslims, we take the instruction of Allah. If He tells us to stay away from something, we stay away from it. We listen. Right? We listen to whatever He says. And sometimes we are told the wisdom behind it, right? And sometimes we're not, right? You may know it, you may not know it. So Ibn al-Qayyim, there's a great scholar who passed away in the 7th century after the Prophet, may peace and blessings be upon him, passed away. He mentions a whole load of reasonings as to why music is going to destroy your soul. One of them is the statement of Abdullah Mas'ud. He says that music, it produces hypocrisy inside of your heart. Okay. Right? And it ends up affecting your acts of worship and your relationship with God. Right? How does it produce hypocrisy? Okay, I'll tell you. Like we are told, the hypocrites, right? The hypocrites in the Quran, this is mentioned in the Quran, right? Whenever the call of prayer is called, they, you know, go towards the prayer in a very lazy manner. Does that make sense? And here the great companion is telling us that when you listen to music, this is something that now causes the production of hypocrisy now to grow inside of your heart, right? and it ends up affecting your acts of worship and so on and so forth. Also, he also mentions Ibn Qayyim, this is, this is very, very powerful. He says, 
I can hear something. Um, he also mentions that وَكَمْ مِنْ حُرَّةٍ صَارَتْ بِالْغِنَى مِنَ الْبَغَايَا How many women, because of music, they ended up becoming, like for lack of better terms, they ended up becoming prostitutes. Bomba cry. Right? Um, so, يعني, the way you think, the way you end up behaving, right, does it really, at the end of the day, when you think about it, do you see yourself doing that which is something that is pleasing to Allah Azza wa Jal? A lot of the time, these lyrics that people listen to, it's filth, it's evil. It's program. It's direct to, programming. Yeah, it's I was talking about that with Warren when we first got to Mecca last week. We were wearing our Moroccan thobes. And he made a joke. He's like, we're like the niggas in Mecca. Because the thobes here are kind of like the snapbacks of the, of the thobe. And he told me he used to listen to a lot of gangster music. And so did I. He's a, I, I like rap music. And it's left a lasting impact that that's not gonna that's not gonna go would away. Would you not also agree that which you keep looking at and that which you keep hearing eventually begins to profess on your limbs? Right? These are very well known statements of righteous, wise individuals from the past. The more you, they would even advise not to look at someone who behaves in a dumb way. Why? It's gonna affect you. It's gonna end up affecting you. Yeah. Subconsciously, you'll end up behaving like that. Think about it, right? On TikTok, why is it that China? allows only a certain type of content to be accessed by the Chinese. You saw how much we got banned on TikTok, right? Imagine that. Yeah. But in America, it's so much more different. Why? I've come across studies like that. The Chinese are only able to see um, educational content. There's no twerking. And he, as for these guys, and then you see like a 70-year-old uh, guy like dressing like a woman and just twerking towards a... Stuff. You know, it was, uh, these are clips that I would see. When, when, when TikTok firstly started up, now it's a little bit different. It is directly correlated with the algorithm. So but your before, algorithm is probably halal for the most sorry? part. Your algorithm is probably halal because it's... I don't know. I, I don't have TikTok. I, I don't use TikTok. Yeah, I don't have an either. active TikTok account. Yeah. Remember, we said this last time wrong. Yeah. Someone comments, Mujahim plays a wave. What is wave, bro? I don't know. And my name is not Mujahim. My name is Mujahid. And I did this live stream for sake of Allah, the only reason, cause I, I'm, I'm not sleepy. Okay, go to watch that. Yeah. Um, but and then you got people behaving like this because of what they keep seeing. They normalize it. When you keep looking at something, you begin to normalize it in your day-to-day -day life. And then the people see it, they get shocked because they're not used to seeing that. But because you've been looking at it all the time, you've been hearing something. Throughout your day, you end up behaving like that. I used to see myself back in the day when I would listen to music, I would start acting like them. And then my dad would see me walking on the road trying to do these break dancing moves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was a young kid. You could break dance? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, Arabic guy, uh, <laughs> he comment, he comments, bro. Uh, Mujahid in Arabic, mashallah, alhamdulillah for brother. Passers by, thank you for this name, Mujahid. Okay, in, in Arabic. Let, 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 let's watch, bro. What? Listening at, listening yeah. to, and what I kept on looking at, I would start doing these movements just as I'm walking. You know, as a young 11 year old, 12 year old, my okay, dad would see this and, and he would tell me off for doing so, but it affects you. Right. You know? Do you think that, well, they have that term noor, right? N-O-O-R, it's that. People said that to me after I reverted, like, oh, you could see the noor in his face, where you're, if you're surrounded by halal when you're praying and you have good thoughts, it, it reflects on your face. But if you have ugly thoughts, you're around ugly people, you're doing ugly things, it starts to grow and wear and tear on your body. Face. Like, we have a tradition. Uh, the cousin of Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings, actually said this, right? He said, Inna lil hasanati diya'an lil wajh. The good deed that you do, it begins to show on your face. And as for the bad deed, it begins to put darkness on your face. Does that make sense? It begins to show on your face. What's the word for nor, for negative nor? Nor uh, it means light. You can say maybe darkness. Right? Okay. But do you think yeah, that I'm all sure music people, uh, Of course, we have something called nasheed, which doesn't have musical instruments. We've I love nasheed. We've been prohibited from uh, musical instruments, right? So nashis are permissible, providing three conditions are met. Number one, it doesn't have any haram lyrics. 
I think everyone knows what haram means now, right? Yes. Uh, you it, guys popularized it. Yeah. Um, within the non-Muslim community. Yeah. Uh, um, providing it doesn't have any musical instruments. Secondly, um, that it doesn't have any haram lyrics, right? Uh, and thirdly, you don't believe that this is something that is getting you closer to Allah. Because uh, otherwise it would become something that's an innovative practice, right? Uh, it's like an ada, it's a normal, uh, you know, cultural tradition that people have had, uh, they would always listen to. Uh, and because of it, it is permissible until proven otherwise, in that sense. Do you have a favorite nasheed? Mine's uh, Yaqurubin. Huh? Yaqurubin. I love the sheet. I love the sheet. You mean Yadu'at? I think it's called Yaqurubin. But yeah, it, that's the lyrics. So, yeah, I, do, yeah. I don't actually go out my way to listen to the sheets, but every now and again, I see some of the brothers, they may put it uh, behind some of the... Uh, the edits? Yeah, behind the edits and everything. Yeah. You feel like you're going to go to war. Like it's like a battle cry sometimes. But is all music bad? That was the argument from my dad. He's like, music uplifts my soul. It makes me feel better. What, what if it's once like... the music goes up, how does it feel after that? It goes back to normal. Now, and then he needs it again. And he goes back again. Have even none of this stuff that is not through avenues that are godly is ever going to nourish your soul. Right? You need to understand that. That's why I said before as well, right? you need uh, an Islam in your life. And once you have a religion, you will see yourself, inshallah ta'ala, doing the right thing. And once you do the right thing, you'll feel that spiritual nourishment that people are crying out for. And sins have an impact on your heart, even Muslims, right? They use the exact same argument. When I listen to music, I feel good. To, okay, are you going to be listening to music 24 hours a day? How do you feel after that when you're alone, right? None of this can actually nourish your soul. And most people testify to that, right? Is there a reason why specifically music is the voice for Satan? How do you see how do you see people behaving after they listen to music? Exactly. Right. Again, like we can go into finding the wisdoms behind it, but bro, at the end of the day, once you accept that Allah is your Lord, right, and He is your Creator, and whatever He's telling you to do is in your best interest, you'll be ready to submit fully. Right? What about fat? What are the what are the benefits of fasting? What's the why does Allah tell us to fast for thirty days every year? Okay, so as we mentioned before, right, um, when you think about it, you're withholding from food and drink, right? And also sexual intercourse, you're disciplining your soul, right? And as we mentioned, this is not the main objective of Ramadan. In the Quran, the verse, verse that came down, it's a, that speaks about fasting, right at the end, Allah tells us, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may acquire piety, you may acquire righteousness, be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we stay away from looking at haram, listening to haram, eventually you will become someone who is righteous because he stayed away that which is going to lead him to the haram. When you think about it now, right? A lot of the haram that we do, would you agree that it eventually uh, originates from the eyes, originates from the ears, originates from your tongue? Does that make sense? So in Ramadan, you're holding that back. So once you train that, hopefully after that, inshallah, that you'll continue it. And you'll see yourself doing all sorts of great things, right? Uh, being more closer to Allah and so on and so forth. Yeah. What have you noticed? Uh, you, so you travel a lot, you, must meet, you mostly meet with the youth, or do, do older people come too? Well, it's, a, it's, a, it's a combination. It's a combination? It's a combination. Yeah. What have you noticed? I, that, I'm curious about that. So you went to, to eight different states in the United States. I'm sure you're all over the world. You're, you, you're in Saudi. What do you notice is the, is the number one problem? What's a common factor that a Muslim is struggling with right now? Bro, it's the, uh, you know, if I, if I go through my Instagram right now, all the messages I'm receiving, a big chunk of it will be, I've fallen into the sin, I'm spiritually dead and empty, please help me. What do I do? I fell into this haram relationship, or I've done X, Y, and Z, I'm in this particular state, can you please advise me, how can I feel better, and so on and so forth, right? And social media, hasn't really helped the situation when you think about it. No, it makes it worse. You know, everything is just a fingertip away. Social media sells sin. They've turned it into something very profitable. Bro, think about it. Once upon a time, if you wanted to do haram, you would have to go sit in front of your Dell computer with the big backs. Remember the Dell computer with the big backs, right? And you'd be watching the door, right? Looking you'd back, yeah, I, remember, I remember. Dial up internet. 
exactly. You would be watching the door to see if somebody coming in is not somebody coming on in. On the family computer, yeah. Exactly. Right. Even if you're not a Muslim, you're not going to be accessing certain things because it's just, in your books, morally unacceptable, right? right? Or looked down upon or shunned. Right. Um, now you just stumble upon it and you click a reply, you click a tweet and you see it. Elon Musk is doing some good things. He started to ban a lot of the accounts promoting OnlyFans and porn. He started to get rid of those because they're making a lot of money, more money than ever. I don't think porn has ever been this successful and, and this profitable than, than right now. And all the major sins, uh, gambling has never been this big. Rush, I'll tell you something, right? Have you ever wondered why the, the porn industry, the gambling industry, the alcohol industry, even the sports industry, they are billion dollar industries. Why? Why are they making so much money? Have you thought about it? Well, I, I, yeah, I do. Would you yeah. not agree that they are feeding off the interest, or should I say, the sadness of human beings? That's what keeps you ticking. Even the music industry, the billion dollar industry, why? Because you think that when you're sad and I listen to music, it's going to keep my soul nourished. It's going to give me that contentment and at the end of the day, it doesn't do that. It might just be like a, what you think to be like a short fix, but then you're going to be back to square one again. Yeah. The billion dollar industries. It's all short term pleasure. Even sports, yeah, short term, exactly. Best way to put it. All of these things, it gives you that buzz and then you're back to square one again. There's a certain group of people that controls all these industries too. Yeah. yeah. So I we noticed all know that, who they are. Yeah, yeah. Well, we don't, you know. But who control porn, who control media, music industry. Yeah, so I even saw an article, subhanAllah, one yeah. of these rabbis actually Interest. bought oh, okay. some of these. He said uh, it. Well, great, yeah. <laughs> I forgot his name. Actually, wanted to use Rabbi Shmuley. Huh? Rabbi Shmuley? No, 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 not him. You know, Rabbi Shmuley, he sells a butt plugs with his daughter. It's stuff for a while. I think it's despicable. It's not mentioned this kind of stuff. Sorry, though. Yeah. No, no, I mean, like, I don't even want to. Warren Mecca. Dignify yeah. his name, I yeah, think. You're right, you're right. Right? Uh, but then there was another one who actually bought one of these very well known uh, platforms, right? So, why, why do you think they're doing that? Even though in Judaism, these things are prohibited, if I'm not, right? These people have an agenda to destroy humankind, to destroy people's hearts, and to leave them in a state that many people are in at this moment in time. Because we're all goy. I mean, they're the chosen people, and we're all men. We're yeah, created to serve them. Else, once we destroy them, they're meant to be serving us, right? We're just designed to serve them because they're the chosen people. That's what they. I mean, they don't really have to. Yeah, it's, it's besides the point. We're in Mecca. Um, I noticed that people say that you check your DMs all the time. And people have told me to ask you that you get crazy. What, like, what's the craziest DM you got? You don't really respond to them, but you bring it up well, in your talks. Most recent times, I actually deleted the Instagram app. You deleted it? Yeah, I deleted it. But there was a time when I would read every single message that I received. And, I, and, and, and someone may think, like, how do you even find the time? Bro, people That's a lot have of found, time. you know, they put in the effort, they put in the time uh, to send this message. And they're reaching out, hoping to receive some inspiration and some help. And it's an act of worship as well to help people. I want to be able to get back to everyone, but through these podcasts that we do, through the lectures that I deliver, I try to perhaps maybe uh, deliver a message that summarizes a lot of people's problems. Like right. what we're discussing now is going to be the answer of so many people. Right? Um, like I can't, man, I just can't keep it. Especially now, you know, the master is very overwhelming. There's many assignments that I have to do. Even now, I have to hand in an assignment on Sunday. Um, You're getting your PhD? No, it's a master's and inshallah later on I have to do the PhD. Uh, but this is where I'm at at this moment in time. So if anyone's listening and feels like I've not been getting back to them, it's, it's really hot, really, really hot. You know? I try and there's only so much that I can personally do. But you, you could probably summarize it right now. What's the most common one? People, yeah, it was pe one that we discussed people, people just like falling into so sin? People just like falling into sin? So immersed and indulged Which in sin? sin? Which sin? Whether it may be pornography, whether it may be haram relationships. And... You know, I've, I've said this many, many times, please, brothers, don't be someone who joins that long list of people that end up messaging me because they've fallen into haram relationships and then eventually they are struggling spiritually. Bro, like, I used to sometimes, I'm going to read out some stuff to you. I'm, I hope Perfect. it's still, like, very, very close. Perfect. Right? I would not sometimes save some of these uh, messages that I receive of people in haram relationships. Okay, here's one of them, look. This is an email that I received. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. My name is Hassan. Oh, I shouldn't have mentioned his name. Qadr Allah, Mashaq. Somebody was saying really, L College. That could be anyone, inshallah. And I really need your help 
majorly. Your advice, I mean, I really don't know where to start. I keep falling into the same sin over and over again. It's really hard to escape it, but I'm trying. I really am trying to be a better Muslim. I'm trying to quit music, right? I don't listen to music nowadays. I read the Quran and I still, right, don't feel the happiness in me. I pray my Salah and I don't feel happy. I give charity and I don't feel happy. That's not all. When I sin, I don't feel guilty, right? Sometimes we sin and it ends up affecting our acts of worship. Does that make sense, right? I make myself feel it and then I just cry to Allah. That's when I feel a heaviness on my chest. I want to feel happy, Sheikh. When I do good things and I want to feel really guilty. But we need to understand that the sins that we fall into has consequences. Right? A lot of people think that when you sin, the only time that you have to answer to Allah is when you meet Him on Yom al Bro, it has consequences. I was just the other day, I was reading a thread. Somebody sent me a thread pertaining to pornography. Right? And this is a non Muslim. I was talking about that when you, uh, you know, uh, engage in pornography, you're going to become someone who uh, feels so alienated. You're going to feel uh, so unproductive. It's going to affect your finances. This is a non Muslim saying it. I have the thread. I'm sure I saved it as well. Right? On. Uh, it might be a good idea to actually read out. So people realize that when Islam tells you something, right, it's not a backwards religion. These people only find out later on and only then you begin to accept it. When Allah and His Messenger told you 1400 years ago. Well, a lot of people need to burn their finger on the stove before they so, realize it's hot. Let me see if I can find it. I know me sometimes tend to bookmark some of these... Uh, here we go. Here we go. I received this. Someone said to me, it might come in extremely handy. This guy's account, masculine ego, right? He said, porn is the worst sin to humanity. I agree. Right? It corrupts the soul faster than any other. He says, block anyone sharing it. Men, porn will ruin your life. Here's why. Ban porn. He says, My life also, it weakens your brain. Yep. He says, mental disorders like stress, poor focus, depression, social anxiety. All these result from binge watching pornography. And a rabbi owns Pornhub. <laughs> Number two, it kills your inner drive, right? It says men who are hooked on watching pornography struggle with their financial status, their relationships, their career. And then he says great men are busy growing businesses, building their families, advancing in their career. It messes with your T level, right? Goes, it makes you retarded have a weaker body, unsure of what you want out of life. Habib, a lot of these points, Islam taught us about it. Right? Even the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith, One is deprived of provision because of the sin that he falls into. Right? You may ask me the question, okay, there's a lot of people that are watching pornography, but they're still financially all right. Risk, provision in our Sharia, it doesn't necessarily just mean money. Right? It can be faith. It can be to have that spiritual contentment that money can't buy, right? That people are crying out for, right? So a lot of the things that he's mentioning, sin drives you to, ins to insanity. Does that make sense? And this is all mentioned in the Quran. And he's just reiterating that, not knowing this is actually what an Islamic concept. Unfortunately, we have even Muslims, it requires them to hear like a study or to come across a news article before they smell the coffee. Mm. Just accept that. The religion of Islam is the true religion. Allah Azza wa is the Almighty Creator that's created all of us. And He knows that which is best for us. And it's all mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is where we take our religion from. The Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam upon the understanding of the companions. And it's all there for people to see. Right? I just at times, these kind of articles or these kind of posts, right? Whenever I come across it, I just use it um, as a support for whatever I'm saying. Right. Perhaps there may be someone who is more than happy to take it from here or from these sources than maybe when Allah says something. Does that make sense? And of course, humankind, they are always, right, improvising and they are always developing, right? So, um, I'm so, so surprised. I'm so yeah. surprised that you read every single DM. The fact that you, you have like, the time maybe to... Maybe slow down. Yeah. Maybe like two years ago, I was doing it. Uh, a lot. Even now, I try to, to the best of my ability, but I don't have the Instagram anymore. I've deleted it. What made you delete Instagram? 
I just didn't want it to occupy me, right? Didn't want like I'm the type of person when I see someone struggling, like I'm gonna stop whatever I'm doing and help them, yeah, right? That's but now it's become so much. You can't do like, it. I can't. Like I just. It's can't. impossible. Yeah. This is why, like, like it's my dream to see so many brothers giving da'wah. Right? There's just not enough of them, right? Instead of brothers going after one another, having envy towards one another, and this is extremely rampant. In the da'wah right? scene. Well, yeah, yeah. Even outside of the da'wah scene, whether it's in the da'wah scene or outside of the da'wah scene, it's a human characteristic that people really struggle with. Like, it's my dream. Like, I get happy when I see a brother who's got something to offer. He's wanting to benefit his community. Achi, I push him forward. Right? I can't go around and give da'wah in every single locality, in every single city. We want brothers to go and, you know, spread the khair, you know, spread the goodness. The internet's probably the best place to do it, instead yeah, of going to all these places. In the UK, we were able to get a lot of the guys in the, in the same room, which I was really happy about. I was really, I was really happy about. What are you studying now? Are you saying that, uh, what do you, you have your master's coming up. What exactly no, is so it? Is it masters, the, the way it basically works is, for a whole year, you're going to be attending classes. They train you now to become someone that is, um, uh, that is able to write theses in Arabic language in your speciality, your tachasis. So this moment in time, I'm attending different classes. Like one of the classes that I'm attending is, or one of the subjects, is uh, contemporary and modern day uh, occurrences and how do we actually deal with it? What is the Islamic ruling and how we deal with some of these contemporary, modern day, Issues that surface uh, into the real world, right? Mm -hmm. uh, how do we deal with it? Does that make sense? Uh, how much longer till you get till you're done? So it's, it's one year, and then after that, I'm going to start writing my thesis on something that. What's your thesis on? No, I haven't chosen it. Okay. But I've got some things in mind. Can you tell me? My let's leave it, inshallah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I might tell you off camera. Huh? Do you have a favorite hadith? That's yeah. one you do. I'll tell you. And uh, hopefully, inshallah ta'ala, it'll benefit you a lot. And everyone else is watching as well. It changed my life for the better. It okay. Really did. Can you explain what hadith is for, the, for those that don't know? So hadith is something that Prophet, may peace and blessings be upon him, said, right, uh, with his tongue, or he carried out with his limbs, uh, or something that he acknowledged, right? Something happened in front of him and he acknowledged it. This would be considered a hadith, something that goes back or is attributed to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So is it hadith to eat dates after... Yeah, because the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam done it, right? That's not sunnah? Us. Yeah, that's sunnah. So hadith is what the Messenger done and sunnah is the exact same thing. Okay. Something that is recommended for you to do that the Messenger, may peace and blessing be upon him, done. Does that make sense? So one of my favorite hadith is, you don't leave something for the sake of Allah, except Allah will give you that which is better. It could be that you're involved in haram. You're watching a certain something, or you're engaging in a certain something. You have certain financial dealings that is displeasing to Allah, and you're fearful of poverty if I was to leave it. You leave it, see the doors that Allah is going to open up for you. Bro, countless people that I've spoken to who sought my advice, I'm dealing with haram. I've got this haram job, right? And I'm scared if I leave, and this is going to happen. Bro, we've all left things, and Allah never abandoned us. He never ever abandoned us. And I believe in what Allah says and what the Messenger, may peace and blessings be upon him, says. And Allah does not fail in his promise. There's a verse in the Quran, I think it's maybe worth mentioning, when Allah says uh, about the devil, right? Shaytanu ya'idu. So Hassan al Basri mentioned, I've read in 90 places in the Quran, I've read in 90 places in the Quran. And Allah qaddar al arzaq that Allah has guaranteed your provision. Because this is an Islamic tradition, right? That our provision has been decreed, right? And uh, yes, your provision can increase depending on certain things that you do, right? And it can also be affected. Okay? So he's saying that I can, I've read in 90 places that Allah is going to provide for you. And I read in one place that the shaitan scares the people with poverty constantly whispering so what did we end up doing we ended up disbelieving in these 90 verses that speak about your provision and we ended up believing the devil in this one place does that make sense mm -hmm. right. when you in the hadith when it says that Allah will replace whatever that whatever is haram that you've given up does that not imply that he's giving you something in the dunya that he's giving you something worldly or is it, it in jannah it could be here in the world we it don't know what it is in the hereafter 
Okay. Right? If I said to you now, I'll give you a million dollars, but this million dollars is actually going to lead you astray. Would you prefer this or being someone that doesn't barely have anything, but he's guaranteed, right? Eternal happiness and paradise the moment he passes away and you can pass away anytime. Right. But imagine if I, I see I was offered a $20 million gambling deal. Yeah. Imagine I rejected that. Yeah. Imagine if I still don't make it to heaven. I mean, inshallah, you know, perhaps maybe. That would have been a waste. Reason. No, but Allah gives us chances after chances after chances. Yeah. Oh, you're right. good job, bro. And I know you turned that down, right? Yeah, yeah I did turn it down. I did turn it. If I didn't turn it down, I wouldn't be here right now. I'd be clicking fruit back in Miami. And it could be maybe because you turned that down that you're in this wonderful place now. That is why. Meeting these wonderful brothers. This is a better experience. Brotherhood. Yeah, it is. Right? This is more valuable and than money. Subhanallah, like when I, when I think about your situation, right? Like you're only increasing and becoming a lot better. There's still, you know, so much more that we can do. Right, but you're getting more and more better, right? And this is something that cannot be bought with money, Akhi. I know a lot of people that are multi-millionaires, right? And I don't take anything from them because I believe you can't give da'wah to someone that you take money from. That's the principle I have. That's not hadith though, that's, 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 that's your own hadith. It was narrated by Abu Taymi, it? <laughs> <laughs> Right? Point is... Take the money, man! <laughs> the point is, Akhi, it's, the, 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 the money is too good for them to turn down. Right, and but they're not living the best of lives, and I keep telling them every time I meet them, bro, I'm just gonna have to move away from this man. They just can't imagine living a different type of lifestyle, this type of lifestyle that they got used to. Oh, so they're multi millionaires and they involve themselves and in dunya, actually dead and empty, I think. so they're sleeping around and drugs, stuff like and that. All yeah. sorts of haram and living a life of like they might they may put on a face in public, yeah, yeah, but then when they go to sleep, it's a they it's can't a whole fall different asleep. Game, man. Yeah. They cry themselves to sleep. Big grown men, actually, they cry themselves to sleep. Stuff for and he'll only tell me this. Yeah. And he's not going to tell anyone else because he then, needs to kind of yeah. keep that reputation up in his community, right? Yeah, no. He needs to walk with, her, with his chest out. But in reality, it's a whole different situation. Cry themselves to sleep. Money cannot buy you happiness, my friend. No. No, I can't. Yeah. Well, I just... will testify, actually, even some of these brothers, right, are with us and others. Some are living a certain type of life, so then they come here and they feel very different. Why do you feel different? Why do you feel spiritually nourished? Why do you feel rejuvenated? Because acts of worship have an impact on your heart. Does that make sense? Do you think that that man who's crying himself to sleep, the big macho man in public, when he's alone, he's sad. Do you think that listening to the Quran will help him sleep? Without a shadow of a doubt. Really? I notice a lot of brothers like that. That a lot of them, they grew up with Islam. And when I say, like, no. he cry himself to sleep, right? He's going to sleep, but he's by himself. Thinking about his lifestyle, thinking about what he does the moment he wakes up, thinking about his interactions with people. That's what's making him feel so guilty. Figuratively speaking, right? I mean, when you talk about the issue of sleep. He'll end up sleeping, but this is how he ends up going to sleep. Every single night. There's no way to live. No, it's not a way to live, actually. And some people have to drink in order to be able to get to sleep. I have a saying in it, they, was it? They drink to forget, we do dhikr to remember. Hmm? What is dhikr? Dhikr means we do like Quran and remembrance of Allah. Mm -hmm. they, drink to, they drink to forget, we do dhikr to remember. We do dhikr to remember. I wish music was haram because that'd be a bar. That'd be the opening line to your album. What do you say to those brothers, those macho brothers that, um, that can't sleep? And they, a lot of them grew up with Islam and they left and they have a, they have a hard time making prayer, making salah. Okay. Say it again, sorry. I'll switch stuff there. What's say, that? Say it again, say it again. How do those brothers, those macho brothers, come back to Islam? I, I know a lot of those guys, they grew up with Islam. In public, they're one way, but in private, they, so they get... You mean these big guys? Like exactly, yeah. All the time? And a lot of them, they grew up with Islam and they left because of dunya. How were they able to get back and open their hearts to Allah again? Like when you think about it, right? Um, we spent hours working on our outer appearance. Am I correct to say that? How yeah. many hours do people spend in the gym? We, it's like we're playing The Sims in real right. life. Three, four hours a day? Yeah. Am I right to say that or am I exaggerating? Probably, probably three. Three hours, right? Including showering and getting ready and the Anything. smoothies and protein. All that time to work on our outer appearance. Brothers, a fraction of that. A fraction of that, spend it on learning your religion. Perhaps they may give you the answers that you're actually looking for. You're getting all muscly and you're getting all big in order to do what? When you think about it. 
Does that make sense? Spend a fraction of that just working on your heart. The messenger, may peace and blessings be upon him, he told us, Inna Allah la yandru ila suwarikum wa la ila sarikum. Allah does not look at your body. He doesn't look at your outer appearance. Mm -hmm. But rather that which he looks at is your heart, yani the state of your heart, and also your actions. This is what's really going to matter at the end of the day. I'm not saying don't, don't work out. No. <laughs> Go work out, my friend. Yeah. You know, Islam encourages you to be strong and healthy. It's good. Wrestling is a sunnah. Exactly. Um, the companions would wrestle. Uh, and keeping fit is good. Um, but the point is when you're spending so much time doing that and also for the wrong intentions, right? Because you're trying to pull yani, a certain somebody. Um, and you really, when you think about it, right? So you need to work out your soul as yeah, much as you work out your yani, muscles. Let's give some time to that. Think about it. You're spending four or five hours on your outer appearance. Even sisters, how many hours do they spend in front of the mirror? Probably seven to seven hours a day. What do you exaggerate? No. Huh? Uh, more would, than the brothers? Yeah, more than the brothers. Seven hours. Some brothers are actually are on the same page. I'm not going to lie. I never said that. He said that. Huh? You can cancel him, not me. What the? Uh, <laughs> I think it's maybe what? Three hours? Four hours? We need to look at the, the sister screen time and see what it's like. I like Kuli Hal. I like All of that in order to... What do you Right? And then you're dead inside. And that guy, that guy that was trying to impress. I was, I wanted to ask you this. How much should we pray for Dunya? How much should we pray for worldly things? And how much should we focus on getting to the afterlife? Sometimes when I pray and I'm here because I'm thinking, you know, there's extra rewards. I'm in Mecca. Oh, I could pray for, you know, like a beautiful wife. Or I could pray for, for halal wealth, these things. Is it even, is it even the right thing to yeah, pray? Why not? Akhi, ask Allah whatever you want. Ask Allah whatever you want, my friend. Huh? If we don't ask Allah, who are we going to ask? Isn't that selfish? Right? No, why not? Should I even be praying for that? May peace and uh, the messenger, may peace and blessing be upon him. He says, Man lam alayhi. Whoever doesn't ask Allah, Allah becomes angry with him. Whatever, it says, whatever. Whoever doesn't ask Allah, right? Allah becomes angry with him. Allah wants you to ask him. Right? There's even some lines of poetry. Um, when you ask the people of you know, uh, when you ask human beings today, there's only so many times that they help you, right? And eventually they get tired of you. Does that make sense? They eventually get tired of you asking them all the time. But Allah is just, the more you ask him, the more he loves it. Right? Other so of course, that... our number one priority is to get to Al Jannah, to get to paradise. We ask Allah, you know, even there's a comprehensive dua, a uh, you know, supplication that the messenger would make. May peace and blessing be upon him. Rabbana, atina fi dunya hasana. Yeah. What does you, that say mean? That, you say that by the Kaaba, right? Exactly, yeah. Okay. See, I know some stuff, come on. Oh Allah, give me the, 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 uh, give me the good of this world, and also give me the good of the hereafter, the best of it. And I'm protecting from the hellfire. Look how comprehensive that is. Right? Sometimes you ask for something very, very specific, but Allah gives you that which is more better, because He knows that's more better for you. Or something else, because He knows that's better for you. Does that make sense? So yeah. you may be asking for a particular job, يعني, but Allah ends up giving you something else because He knows in the long run that's so much more better for you. So when brothers and sisters, they come here and they ask for something, they don't get it. They shouldn't feel like Allah is not answering their call. He, he, just, he answers it in a different way. You know, there's a narration. There's a statement of the Prophet, may peace and blessing be upon him. You either get it now or you end up getting it in the hereafter or, right, um, it could be that you make this dua now and Allah eventually protects you from some evil that would have come your way. Perhaps that puts things in the protect, uh, perspective. And it could be you're asking for a certain somebody and you think that person is the love of your life and there's no one else on the face of this earth that can make right, you happy. That can make you happy yeah. But it just doesn't work out. And it could even be that you end up getting married and then you divorce. Yeah. Right? What happens later on down the line? Allah gives you someone that has traits and characteristics that the mind can't imagine. This is when you say, if that didn't happen, I wouldn't have this today. Wallahu ya'lam wa antum la ta'lam. And Allah says this. Allah knows best and you don't know. Right? He knows the best of our affairs. 
How many a time have you found yourself in a situation where you so badly wanted this? I can say this about myself in so many situations. I'm thinking, why is it not happening for me? But then something else happens later on on the line and I say, oh, it's done. Now it makes sense. But because we're so limited in our understanding, right? We struggle to see the bigger picture. That's just how our brains are. We're very limited in the way we think, right? We are deficient as human beings. That makes sense. And then when it ends up happening, oh, I feel so great. Right? Has that happened to you? You've understood that Allah gave you what you really needed and not yeah, what you wanted? Without, without, without. Now, I'll give you an example, right? Okay. I so badly wanted to do my masters in Medina. Right. You've seen how tranquil Medina is. Medina. Yeah. More peaceful than Mecca, yeah. A lot more peaceful. Everybody says that, right? In its own way. In its own way. Everyone says that, yeah. I really wanted to do my masters there. Can I wear it like this or is this haram? No, but you would only do that when you get there. Well, I can't wear it like this now? It's, it's just falling off. You're trying to show off the... No, no, no. It's just falling off. Your, your, your biceps to the I've been in the, the gym camera. four hours a day, Aki. Huh? Shahid min al-kalam. Like, I so badly wanted to do it in Medina, my masters. And it just wasn't happening. All of my friends, I have like... A group of friends where one of them is Algerian, the other one was Nigerian, one of them was Russian. We were very close with one another, right? All of them were saying, I'm going to get accepted and they wouldn't. You know what happened? All of them got accepted except for me. And the Libyan brother as well. All of them got accepted. You're the only one that I wasn't the only one. And they thought I would get accepted. Because right. I had a very high GPA. I thought you would get accepted too. Yeah, I, I was hoping as well. I had a very good uh, GPA and I did very well in my master's entry exam as well. Why did they decline you? I'll tell you after. I'll tell you, I'll tell you now. Was it because of this podcast? No, 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 okay. no. I'm talking about, this is time ago. This is well before our podcast. Okay, 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 okay. No, no, it's, not, it's got nothing to do with that. I'm joking, about it. Yeah. And then it just, it didn't happen. I packed my bags. I remember my wife was crying. She really badly wanted to, you know, spend more time in Al Medina. And we just had to leave, right? Uh, I took my Khuruj Nihai, my final exit, and I left. Later on, it was suggested to me that I should apply for the university in Riyadh, right? Oh, where you are now? Yeah, where I am in, at this moment in time. And everyone says, I, I don't know, man, but a lot of people here in Saudi Arabia, they say that's the best university for um, Islamic jurisprudence, right? It has that kind of reputation. So anyways, I didn't even know that. Eventually, I accepted to apply. It required a lot of... Uh, convincing for me to even apply, right? I applied, and then I got in. What happened? Fast forward now two years, I'm at the university. A brother not so long ago said to me, uh, I think it was a Nigerian brother, he says, I believe Allah brought you to Riyadh for a reason. I said, hey, what? What is this reason? Because I know if you were in Medina, you wouldn't have been able to study. Why? So, so many, no, no, it's just the amount of people that come, they ask for pictures, they ask for meetups, they ask for link-ups. I think it's overwhelming for me, right? When, you know when we met each other in Medina? Yeah. I was in this uh, study circle where I would read hadiths to the teacher. I was memorizing some hadiths and I read it to the teacher. For every five minutes, somebody would come take a picture. They want to take a selfie. Tell them no. Like, yeah, you got a good heart, I know. I, 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 yani I really struggle saying no to people. Right. No, actually, you know what? Yeah. One viral from the last one. Yeah. When we were doing the podcast, four girls came up to you and they wanted a picture and you said, no, no picture. Ask for that. That's yeah. a red line. Yeah. After something yeah. happening in Colorado or something. No, no, in Minnesota. Yeah. The point is, um, it started making a lot of sense to me. It really started making a lot of sense to me. Like in Riyadh, I can have my peace. I can you know, really focus and concentrate. I don't think I would have been able to do that in Medina. Every week somebody's saying, look, we're here with a group. Can you come give them a reminder? Right? And people may get offended if you say no to them and you've gone to another group. So I think there was a lot of wisdom behind why Allah took me there. And it only made sense to me when two years down the line. It was supposed to happen. Allah is the best of planners. Yes. But you would have thought that that would have... Well, you, you don't go out or anything, but Riyadh is like becoming more vibrant, there's more celebrities there, there's more restaurants, more clubs. You don't find yourself distracted in a big city that's new and exciting like it had? Not really, no. I just stay at home most of the time. And I take the family out every now and again to eat at a restaurant. Yeah. Easy. That's it. Over there, you can't breathe without a car. You need to have a car. So I just drive around with the car, you know? And you do your thing and then you leave. 
it's like the whole American setup, the way the roads are, it's all very similar to America. You need to have a Kaaba. In Medina, it's a lot different. You can walk it. It's, a bit, it's very different. Can you see the Kaaba? Can you, can you, does it look beautiful out there? No? That's a bad view? Uh, it's okay. How does Islam help you be a better father? Of course, it puts down boundaries of what I can do, right? And what I can't do. Uh, and the lessons are very beautiful, like the amount, you know, uh, of effort that we have to put into being a good father. Like, for example, Prophet, may peace and blessings of the economy, said, whoever has two daughters, and this is a good one for those who think Islam is anti-women. So listen up. Whoever has two daughters, looks after them. فَأَحْسَنِ إِلَيْهِمَا Takes good care of them. Right? Me and him, on the day of resurrection, will be like this. We'll be very close to one another. In another narration, it says whoever has three daughters. In another narration, it says whoever has two sisters, or has three sisters. Taking care of them until they get married or until they pass away. Right? You're going to be like this with the Prophet, which we all want. We want to be with him, sitting side by side, asking him questions. Right? Our role model. This is what Islam emphasizes. Not kicking out your daughters after the age of 16. Or oh, it's time for you to leave, go and find a life. No. Isn't this what Western culture is a lot of the time? Independent queens. Keep them in the house until they're married. Like, and he looks after her. This is not a punishment for you remaining in the house. He's looking after you. He's there for you. It's his responsibility. Islam says he has to look after you. Right? But we look at Islam as if it's there to oppress women. And no, that's the opposite of misogyny. That's sant, protecting sant. and providing for the women sant that we love. Baby. Yeah. Two daughters, that's a, that's a lot. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think there's any ideology that gives women more rights than Al-Islam. However, you know what happens a lot of the time? A sister gets married to a guy. She's ignorant and he's ignorant as well. Right? He starts doing certain things which he associates to Al-Islam. This is how I should treat you. This is what I should do. Wawa il akhri, right? And she thinks to herself, if this is Islam, you know what? Islam is a very misogynistic religion. I don't want anything to do with it. Does that make sense? And, um, and she doesn't know any better. She doesn't know how to distinguish between what real Islam is and what this guy is doing. And she goes, you know, I'm gonna become a feminist. Whenever I deliver a lecture about feminism, I first start off with all the ahadith, all the uh, narrations of Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, that emphasized on the role of women in our society. It's so funny you said that just now because yeah. six sisters just appeared. I don't know if they can see in the frame, but it's like as you were saying that, six sisters just like evaporated in, in directly behind you. It's so funny. What do you mean evaporated? I mean, not evaporated. They just uh, they just appeared right behind you. Right, just oh. saying that. Do you do you get called a misogynist too? No. The thing is, I, I like when I speak about women-related issues, especially about feminism. I'm not there to attack them. I'm there. My objective is to make you understand that this ideo this ideology doesn't serve your interests. No, it's I'm giving you. I'm giving you all of these narrations. Islam is telling you X, Y, and Z. One of the last advices that Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, gave was look after your women, look after your women. As salah, as the prayer, the prayer, and also emphasizing the importance of looking after your women before he passed away. He was on his deathbed, and him saying this. And even in the last great, huge gathering that they had, those who came for Hajj, right? There was 120,000 people there. He talked about the importance of women. And not, you know, oppressing them, not harming them, and so on and so forth. What's going on? What happened with that stream, bro? What happened? Ya Allah. Quran, oh yeah, ended up becoming a Muslim, yani. Remember that guy? Yeah. A white man. And who else, yani, most recent times? Allah. Every now and again you come across it. There's a lot of people that are accepting Islam recently. Royce Jones, uh, Jiu Jitsu. Even the other guy, what's his name? Sean, I think his name is? Sean who? Sean King or something? Is that yeah, Sean King. Sean King. Also, um, um, 
Who's that guy that goes, yeah? Uh, Lil John. Lil John just accepted Islam. I don't know. You have no idea. You don't listen to music, so you don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, a lot of a lot of people are coming. People that have said. And that's subhanAllah. Look, if all these people are looking at Islam, I just want to invite everyone to have a look. I think it was what Will Smith the other day that came out and said he read the Quran. They read the Quran. Right. It really has opened the people's eyes. To he needs to get away from that shaitan wife he has, though. That'd be the. Uh, you want to speak on that? I'm sorry. Yeah. How do you? How, what's the best way people get away from haram relationships? I always tell sisters. I always tell sisters, and I tell brothers, pull the plug right now. Wallahi, it's a decision you will never ever regret. It's a decision you'll never ever regret. You know the hadith we mentioned earlier, you don't leave something for the sake of Allah, except Allah will give it out which is better. You know? What if they just get married? What if they're in a haram relationship? We tell them to make tawbah first, innit? To repent to Allah for the haram that they were doing. And then... Uh, What's tawbah? Repentance. Okay. Repenting to Allah for the wrong that they've done. And then... Um, pulling the plug, Wallahi, will be the best decision you've ever made. Especially in Ramadan now as well, where the scene has been set, the devils have been locked up, right? And the doors of Jannah have been swung open. It's so much more easy to do something. Yeah. Oh, I thank you. Thank you. Finally. Yeah. I think our cameraman from Makkah really. has become tired. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, bro. You good? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take off the backpack too. Just make sure the HDMI is okay. Do you, mind, um, do you think you could ask for more coffee? Yeah. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. The camera battery is good? What's that? Oh yeah, we're doing great. We're doing great. We just got started. We just got started. We just got started. We finishing up? No, no, we just yeah. got started. I, I, I'm keeping you to Fajr. <laughs> I'm giving you to Fajr. I think. You sure you don't want some coffee? No, 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 I'm not. I don't need coffee. Can you put the light next to the to the camera? Just uh, prop it up there, like it, it could fit right there. Now, yeah, perfect, perfect, perfect. You want some water? Do you want anything? I want water? No, I'm okay. You sure, bro? Because uh, what do you say? I'm, so I'm going to have a crepe up? layer, innit? The crepes look good, mashallah. Okay. No, I'll have it later. No, no. Yeah. Later, yeah. later. No, 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 no. Huh? No, I'm okay. No, no, I'll have it later. I'll, have it later. I'll take a crepe, yeah. I'll take a crepe, inshallah. I'll take a crepe. Yeah. Maybe no, no, I'll have it later. I'll have it later. You're saying our brother Abu Sarab. You sure you don't want something? You do, do you want anything? Do you, do you want to? No, I'm right now. Okay, okay. How's the stream coming along? We're doing good, man. We're doing good. Yeah. You guys, you can make sure to ask anything you want. Um, are they asking questions on there? Can yeah, they are. Can you see the questions? They are. Yeah, I'll show you. you. You can read them. If you guys have any Islamic questions, inshallah, ta'ala, feel free to write it down, brothers. I have one. Uh, oh, whatever, whatever, whatever you think. I don't care. I don't care, yeah. We can maybe discuss it. Can I ask you, let me ask you one, Aki. Um, I was praying by, do you know um, our brother Modine? Yeah. Uh, he's Shia. And I didn't know he was, but I prayed behind him and he filmed it. I, and people got really upset. Is this funny? <laughs> yeah. Modine is an interesting character. He has reached out to me in the past. Inshallah, maybe this time around when I go to the EK, I'm going to have a uh, discussion with him, hopefully, if I get the chance. But um, he's someone they're, that they're requires... salam to you, all those. Wa alaykum salam, guys. Who is it? And he, he, he needs to be educated, right? Um, so hopefully, inshallah, when I see him, I'm going to have a productive, uh, you know, beneficial discussion with him. You have plans to, to meet him? No, I like uh, last time. Around, I tried to have a sit down with him, but I just couldn't find the time. Hopefully, maybe we can have a productive, mature discussion in the night. I don't think he himself is like an educated individual, even with what he believes. He's pretty smart. He's pretty smart. He's, he's more of a. I think he just makes a lot of gimmicks, doesn't he? That's what I've seen. Yeah. So inshallah. Is it okay for a Salafi Muslim to pray behind a Shia? 
Allah, it depends uh, what this individual actually utters and what he believes. Because the Shias are of different levels, right? You have, of course, the Zaydis in the Yemen. And uh, I don't believe that they have fallen into anything that takes them out of the fold of Islam. Does that make sense? Of course, there are violations that they've fallen into. And then you have, of course, from amongst them who curse the companions. And this is now something that takes you out of the religion of Islam. Or curses our mother Aisha, the wife of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. However, not all of them do that. So if somebody was to now pray behind a certain someone that ascribes to Shiism, they would have to actually uh, be evaluated of exactly what he believes. Does that make sense? I don't know what he believes. Like, I honestly don't know. It was different. The rakat was different. He went down like more times than I was used to. And then what he was saying was that instead of saying Subhanahu he was saying... I know the Zaydis in Al Yemen, right? And in other places as well, they pray very differently to the, uh, the Tawvahs. Right? And of course, when it comes to the prayer, it has pillars. If he's missing out on certain pillars that have been agreed upon in Al Islam, then that salah will not be valid. Does that make sense? So you have that from another angle as well, if that makes sense. Since that was the first time I really heard about Shias was uh, our first podcast. Since then, I saw some videos. I was looking it up. I saw some guys in the UK are like, Shia Kufar, what, what are you going to do with Shia Kufar? It's like I saw some rituals. They like spank a sword on their head. Mm. They're bleeding everywhere. Mm. Should we, do, are they even considered Muslim? It seems so different. Like I saw those rituals. Uh, I don't think it was in Iraq. Uh, it's all red in there. No, of course, all of that is uh, baseless. To be beating yourself morning, right? On the day when, on, on the, uh, what do you call it, the yearly anniversary of when Hussein uh, passed away, was the grandson. That's what that is, the, the red room and all that? Sorry? That's what that is, the, when they're all in the red room, that's an anniversary. When they start whipping themselves like oh, this, with the sword of a bleeding. day every single year, when they come together and they start mourning. And in Islam, we don't mourn yani, in such a way more than the appointed time. Doing it yearly is not something that uh, is Islamic. We're well, happy, says, we're happy. I have a khutbah, I have a Friday sermon that I delivered last year where I talked a little bit about this. So I want to direct everyone to go watch it, inshallah. It went pretty viral. Um, it's called uh, The Killing of Hussein. Ashura, the month of Muharram and the Killing of Hussein. So please, with an open heart, do watch it, inshallah ta'ala. Um, so can they keep considered are they still considered Muslim? Are people are saying, like, like I said, it, it depends. Depending it depends. on the belief right. that that individual has, it depends. So what is Salafi? So I, I don't believe it's correct for one to say she has a kuffar like that unrestrictedly. Right. No, it needs to be elaborated. It depends what that individual believes. Which Shia, yeah. Yeah, which, which type of Shia is he? What is he actually uttering with his tongue? What is he saying with his limbs? If he's saying Ya Ali to the Kaaba, is that... And if he's calling on to... Oh, Ali saved me from the hellfire. Yeah, that makes that's sense. Actually, that's something that takes out the fold of Islam. And I witnessed it in front of the Kaaba. And I think we said this last time around, right? This is something that takes out the fold of Islam. And I'm, I'm not going to buy my tongue saying that. But again, does every single one of them believe that? For us to make this the blanket statement, statement? No. it wouldn't be fair to say so. That's fair. No. But I didn't even realize I was Salafi. But based off what I believe, which I thought was just Islam. We, we, we as Muslims, right? And this is every Muslim. His doctrine should be the Quran, the which is in the Quran, right? And also the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then upon the understanding of the companions, right? Because they witnessed the revelation coming down upon the Messenger, may peace and blessings be upon him. And uh, they saw how the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam propagated that. Are you with me? And they understood it in a particular manner. And this is how we should try to understand how the religion came down, not based on my understanding or my grandfather's understanding or my sheikh or something like that. All of us have a role to play in uh, conveying to the people what the understanding is. And we have great imams when it comes to fiqh, for example, Islamic jurisprudence, who try to analyze and evaluate what they actually said and what they done. Right? Great imams like Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi, Imam Malik, Imam Ahmed. Right? They tried their utmost best to come to a conclusion of what exactly we should do, how we should pray and how we should fast and so on and so forth. So we have these great scholars that play this role in trying to make us understand what the Quran says, what the Sunnah says and how the companions understood it and so on and so forth. That makes sense. What were the companions, what were their ideas about the enemies? Because I have a lot of Zionists attack me, a lot of atheists, a lot of uh, 
people that have left, especially the more I, I say I get closer to, to the Dean, they're, they're coming out of the, they're like rats coming out of nowhere attacking. Well, what would you expect, Ahi? Right? What, would, what would the companions say about that? How would, how would they treat them? I'll tell you about the Prophet, how he used to deal with they these enemies, right? They went to war. Right? <laughs> they went to war with so, them. So, um, we, uh, we know that the Messenger of Allah was harmed in the early days of his message, right? He was harmed a lot, right? His own family members would be harming him. SubhanAllah, even his uh, father-in-law, Waraq ibn Nawfal. Sorry? The, uh, I don't think he called the, I don't think he called it father-in-law, but Waraq ibn Nawfal, um, and he, uh, he said, SubhanAllah, to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Never did, does anyone come with that which you came with, except he's going to be harmed. Right? You're going to be harmed. If you try to call to the truth, you're going to be harmed. People are going to try and oppress you. They're going to try and get you cancelled. This is what comes with speaking the truth. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, man. Even Prophet Moses, he was harmed. We are told about this in the Quran. And in the Sunnah, he was harmed a lot by his people, right? Pharaoh tried to harm him, right? So anyone that comes with the truth, it, it's like a package that it comes with. وَلَقَدْ كُذِّبَتْ رُسُلُ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ فَصَبَرُوا عَلَى مَا كُذِّبُوا وَأُذُوا You know, we are told, like in the Quran, that messengers and prophets that came before you, they were harmed for the truth that they were spreading. And you're going to get harmed as well. I mean, you're being told this, right? Yeah, our first podcast got deleted everywhere. It was doing well. People were being receptive. And did it get deleted on Twitter as well? I don't think it did, right? On Twitter, we're good. Someone uploaded it on Twitter, I think it was. I didn't see it, but Elon Musk, thank you yeah. for... It seems like you've... From my point of view, from what I've seen on social media, you're, you're just like 100% Dean. Some guys are like, oh, you know, he used to be cartel. He used to be a murderer. He used to be a gangster. No, not you. Like uh -huh. other other people in the Dawah scene. Yeah. From, uh, from what I've seen, it's... it's it's hard to find. I don't know. I haven't looked for it, but I haven't found any. Alhamdulillah. Like, I'm not the type of person that's confrontational. I try to deal with concepts and then rebuttal the concepts that are problematic. Like I've spoken a lot about the, uh, the whole LGBTQ, feminism, liberalism. When I went to America, I did a whole tour speaking about these things, yeah. uh, even in the UK. Um, and uh, we just try to follow the guidelines, right? We put the disclaimers right at the beginning of the videos. And then say whatever needs to be said. Alhamdulillah, nothing's been taken down yet. Yani. One of my solicitors actually wrote that disclaimer for me, which we put in the beginning of every video, which I think is very, very important. Because we're not hate preachers. Preach love, right? What do you call speech. it? Love speech. Love speech, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I seen something like that, I couldn't stop laughing. Huh? I was like, did he just change the name? Huh? I have to, I mean, some, some Muslims, they say that they, they wish They'll say like, may Allah curse Netanyahu, for example. I, don't, I personally don't believe in that. I make dua for him, man. Yeah, I make dua. Wallahi, I ask Allah to guide him. May Allah guide, Allah guide Netanyahu. Because one dua from the bottom of your heart, I think sometimes we underestimate the duas. Allah could guide this individual. Yes, if someone asks Allah to destroy him, you can, that's, that, fine. that's fine as well. Right. Um, but maybe that maybe but, Allah answers that prayer by destroying the bad parts of yeah, Netanyahu yeah. and giving him something better. Maybe Allah shut him down. Allah can guide an individual no matter how bad he is. Right? Allah, you know Umar ibn Khattab? No. Umar ibn Khattab, the great companion, because you had after him Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali, right? They were the four great caliphates. Right. Umar al-Khattab is Abu a very... Abu Bakr's grave is right next to the Prophet. Yes, and also Umar. So Umar was the, th was the third caliphate, right? Prophet Muhammad, Abu Bakr, and Umar. Everyone the second after the Messenger Alaihi Wasallam, right? He's a very, very interesting companion, very interesting. They said about him because of how Islamophobic he was, that his donkey will become Muslim before him. <laughs> Would you believe that? I, can't, I don't think donkeys And then he Muslim. ended up becoming, subhanAllah, a great Muslim, a caliphate who aided and assisted Al-Islam. Was that the Prophet's uncle that you were talking about? No, 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 he was uh, uh, one of the, uh, you know, uh, members of the Quraysh, but he was very influential. Does that make sense? Um, very, very influential. Is that Islamic to, to believe in the idea of love speech? Some people say that it's a Christian belief, like loving everybody. Like It seems like a lot of Muslims believe in, you know, violence is sometimes the end. No, I'm not saying like, well, that you shouldn't love your bro, enemy. Bro, don't I believe me, in loving your enemy. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. The, uh, the concept of jihad is part of a religion. I'm not going to bite my tongue. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to bite my tongue or uh, be apologetic about it. But there are rules and regulations. Going to war 
Like, you see everybody going to war, whatever you call it, whether you call it jihad or you call it something else, America, they are under the impression that they can go and invade another country and they justify it. You see what I'm saying? Countries do this, right? Jihad has rules and regulations, of course. In most recent times, it's kind of like been blown out of proportion and, uh, or should I say, it's been misconstrued of what the reality of that actually is. But it's part of our religion, yeah. You know, it's uh, I'm not going to be apologetic about it. It's, it's what it is. How, how should we pray for the... And by the way, I'm not here recruiting for any extremist group. Not at all. We're totally against that, just as a disclaimer. Yeah. We're good with the disclaimers, isn't it? Good disclaimer, yeah. yeah. And I'm not part of ISIS at all. Let me make, <laughs> let me make that clear. I've got nothing to do with it. Yeah. You, can't, you have the beard for it. How do you pray for the LGBT people? How do we, how do we guide them? Habibi, I said, I said, Fima bad, man. I told him after. I told you, it seems like you always. What pass. is the rest of? It's alright, strawberry. Uh, I don't know, the boys are always. Huh? Do you have a lot of strawberry? Wallahi, yeah. We'll Sorry, I don't, time. inshallah. Let someone else have this, innit? I'm very. <laughs> Give it to Omar. You don't huh? need, uh, I've never seen I'll have you it after, I'll have you after. It's gonna get cold now, yeah. Give it to our uh, cameraman from Mecca. The coffee's coming as well. Thank you, bro. I mean, I don't have a fork. Thank you. You sure you don't want you don't want anything? Yeah, I'm alright, man. I'm gonna have it after. Oh, yeah. There's, there's a good one in the chat. I, I guess. I mean, yeah, there's people in the chat saying they're lonely, I don't know what to do, bro. Um, Abu Tamiya reads every single DM, so you can DM him. But how, do, how, do, how do we guide these, um, the LGBT people? Like, well, what's going on? Since I, I, from my point of view, I, I barely see them anymore. Uh, they're not that prevalent Did in my they die down now? I think it was a wave, right? There was a big wave, like, last summer, right? I feel like it died down a little bit. It died down. I think Allah accepted the eyes of many righteous people. When you see them walking around in public now, it's, it's, it's funnier. It used to be more like normalized to see like, a transgender train walking around. And now people point and laugh because it, it is ridiculous to see a grown man. For we as a Muslim, when we see someone uh, disadvantaged, let's call it that, disadvantaged. Are you calling them retarded? No, I'm not saying that. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a love speecher, right? Disadvantaged in that day, those who have chosen this kind of life, uh, the Messenger told us that when we see somebody in such a manner, uh, the dua is, uh, what was the dua again? Alhamdulillah, uh, the afana mimma ptalahum bihi, wa fadlalana ala kithir mimma khalaqa tafdila. Ya Allah, you know, we thank you for, uh, for you know, for, uh, for, uh, for curing us from the situation, you know, uh, from that which you have tested other people with. Does that make sense? Sure. And then you've now preferred us over many of your creation. She's like a lot. I argue about this with my dad all the time. Um, some people criticize me because I, I think gay people are just possessed. I think they're just possessed by shaitan. And they say that that's all oh, it's bad. So they're just born. Some people are born gay. I don't believe that. Something must have happened, either they were molested or they were possessed. So thank you. Something must have happened to them. There's jinn in these people. Is that a, is that a correct belief? Well, of course, sometimes when you get possessed by the shaitan, you start doing all sorts of things. Huh? And the whispers of the devil, like when you're around certain individuals, that they themselves are under the influence of what the shaitan is saying. Shaitan has managed to get the better of them, and then they start right, speaking to one another and influencing one another. You're going to start seeing yourself behave a certain way. It's what we mentioned earlier, right? If you're in a society now, or you're in a circle of friends where certain things are normalized, it's only a matter of time before, you know, you've given in, or you've begun to normalize these kind of things, right? Um, may Allah guide them. I mean, I mean. I mean. Have some, have a date or something. Yeah, I'll have some. I don't think I've ever seen you eat. <laughs> You know that gishta from earlier? That uh, cream. Do they, do they have it here? 
In the, the blue thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the blue. The blue. <laughs> if there is, if there is. You know the blue uh, cream that we were having with the dates earlier. If there is, if there is, if there is any. If there isn't, don't worry about it. Ask more questions, everybody. Oh, okay. Tail Boogie, he said, ask Abu Tamiya about marrying a divorced woman with a child. Something wrong. It's a wrong. Is it not? She's a good sister that's religious, then why not? But it would be very naive for you to think that it's going to be easy. It comes with these challenges, you know? It's like playing uh, playing somebody else's safe game. Allah, yeah, I don't want to go into all of that, yeah, because I mean, it's hard to just... Well, I don't believe it's right for you to, uh, to make judge. a generalized statement and maybe portray everyone in the exact same way. Actually, well, life varies from person to person. Some are psychologically damaged after just coming out of a horrid uh, divorce. And it's something that you're going to have to try and perhaps maybe deal with, you know, or work towards perhaps maybe fixing it. Uh, some, you know, uh, it's not necessarily maybe like that. So it's, it's very, uh, you're going to have to assess it, you know, case by case. Mm. Some people are asking about if, if, you, if you know any stories about Abu Bakr. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. What's that? The companion of Abu Bakr? Yeah, Abu Bakr. Oh, Abu Bakr was the greatest companion after, you know, from amongst the companions, he was the greatest person after Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him. He carried the message of Islam after his prophets. Yeah, yeah, he was the most virtuous among them. One thing that always really touches me about Abu Bakr, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, and because we're in the month of forgiveness, I think it's worth maybe mentioning. Right? Um, he had a cousin called Mistah ibn Uthatha. When Mustah was in Mecca after Abu Bakr migrated to Al Medina and he came to Al Medina, he didn't have any sources of income. His only source of income was what Abu Bakr was giving him. So charitable, so generous, so kind. He would help out the people around him, right? Mistah committed a very grave crime. There was a time when a slander was spread about his daughter Aisha radiallahu anha. Who was she? She was the wife of Prophet Muhammad. Responsible for most of the hadith. Right? Is that correct? And she narrated a lot of the hadith. Right? She narrated many of the hadith. Long story cut short, the slander that was spread by the hypocrites that she had actually committed haram. Right? They tried to accuse of having committed adultery. Imagine that. This is the wife of the Prophet. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Why were they accusing of that? They're hypocrites, innit? They're trying to harm the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And from amongst those who partook and participated in the slander was his cousin, Mistah. Abu Bakr became furious. He said, from this moment on, I'm never going to uh, help him ever again. Because he was his only source of income. He's helping him in Iraq, helping him in Iraq right? So then subhanAllah a verse was sent down. After Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha was cleared of these allegations that were being pinned up against her. Right? A verse came down, the people of virtue should not. Right? Right? People of virtue should not be people who stop helping those who had migrated from Makkah to Al-Madinah, meaning his cousin. You shouldn't stop giving him more, Ya Abu Bakr. Right? Uh, like, put yourself in that in, in his shoes. Yani. Imagine someone insulted or spread something about your wife, or he spread something about your mother or your female folk, slandered them, accused them of having committed zina. What our reaction would be? He said, I'm just not going to spend on him anymore. So after this verse came down, after this verse came down, uh, he was instructed to uh, pardon and forgive. Wouldn't you love for Allah Azza wa to forgive you? Right? Not only did he forgive him, which is a very difficult thing to be doing anyway, but he continued spending on his cousin. That's not an easy thing to do. 
this is from the virtues of Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala. Right, he forgave him and he continued spending on him. So as soon as he heard the verse, right, he submitted to the command of Allah Azza wa And he said, yes, I want Allah to forgive me as well. The verse states, wouldn't you love for Allah to forgive you? Go and forgive others. He says, yes, I want Allah to forgive me. And he forgave him. Sometimes we hold grudges, especially in the month of Ramadan, over the most trivial of things, right? We don't want to forgive others. We don't want to clear our hearts. We continue to hold these grudges. Year in, year out, in the month of Ramadan, I say this, that people are holding grudges against one another or because he wasn't the first one to know about his daughter getting married. Brothers, they cut each other off. Right? And then you're going to be begging Allah, Ya Allah, forgive me in the month of Ramadan, but you're not able or you don't have the basic decency to go and forgive others. And we were told by the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi the best of the two is the one who starts with the salam. وَخَيْرُهُمْ الَّذِي يَبْدَأُ salam. Does that make sense? Be the bigger man. And if you want something that's really going to take a huge burden off your shoulders, pick up that phone, make that call. Be the first one that initiates that conversation. Let's forgive one another. Wallahi, the moment you put down that phone, see how you're going to feel. It's like a huge burden that's been taken off your shoulders. And I'm not going to say a talk as if it's easy, but remember, the virtue of doing so is so immense. The virtue is so immense. Is that important to do during the month of Ramadan? Yeah, especially in the month of Ramadan. When I think month of Ramadan, I think of forgiving one another, clearing your chest, removing the grudges. Does that make sense? A lot of... Because tomorrow's not promised. Uh, those grudges that you hold and that hold back relationships, especially with family, who knows what would happen tomorrow. Yeah. I, I spent, I have been trying to spend a lot of this time to rehash those relationships and build those bridges again that yeah. hold us back. But it's very difficult because it does a lot. But who knows, man? I, I, one of well, my I biggest sneak, sneak or see how you will feel the moment you put the phone down. So it comes better. with a feeling Relief. that you can't put into words, Pick up that phone and make the call. They're asking about uh, Khalid ibn Walid. I don't, is that a companion? Yeah, he was a great companion. Do you have a favorite story of his? My uh, favorite story. There's a story that's attributed to him that he one time drank poison. Right? To prove a point to them, you know? I never died. He didn't die from the poison. <laughs> what, what, what was he trying to prove? He was trying to prove to them, look, from the uh, great karamat, you know? Karamat. That Allah, Azza wa Jal, through His permission, He can make something happen, you know? That is out of the norm. Is there good books to go and learn about the companions? I saw one good movie, and the born Muslims that watch my stream, they were telling me that every Ramadan, it's, it's custom for people to watch this movie. It's, it's about the, the creation of Islam. It's um, Bilal is a big character in the movie. Uh, what is it called, The Message? I think it's called The Message. It's a great movie. Great movie. I, I don't know if it's, if it's important to watch, but there was nothing haram in there. They, they never even depicted the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His point of view was always from the camera because they, you're not supposed to depict yeah. the Prophet. And they didn't depict also the four great caliphs as well. Yeah, Bilal was one of the main characters, mm -hmm. the black one who, who gets on top of that movie. And it was a good way to, to learn about the companions and learn about the creation. He was a great companion as well. SubhanAllah, one of the very first that entered into Islam. Uh, yeah, even his, uh, his master. He was a slave, right? The slave master put a huge rock on his chest. And he continued to say, Ahad, the one and only, the one and only, the one and only. Ilaha he didn't want to give in here. Now we're getting DMs from people just like that. Probably like how they message you. Uh, Sahara says, Salam, I'm born Muslim. I drifted away from Islam because I didn't give enough attention. But Sneeko, you made me come back and learn a lot about Islam through these streams. May Allah bless you. Uh, I want to hear... Um, okay. Ask Abu Tami about the man who was walking to hell, but looked back and said something good and went to Jannah. Is that true? A person ahead of the narration. I don't, I don't know what he's referring to. That seems too easy. 
Um, I think maybe we can find a reference for that. If you can find the reference. I heard some stories about the, the prostitute who ended up confessing la ilaha illallah and then she made so it. So she did a good deed. Right? She fed a homeless man. No, she fed a, uh, a thirsty dog. She took out, she took off her shoes, she put water in it, and then she quenched its thirst. And then Allah Azza wa Jal forgave her for her sins. You just don't know which act is going to get you into a Jannah. Even the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Don't belittle any good deed. Even if it means uh, embracing your brother with a smile. Meeting him with a smile, you know. Uh, you don't know which deed is going to enter into a Jannah. It could be that Allah doesn't accept any of our da'wah works, you know. But something that we've done in secret that nobody knows about, that's the only thing that gets accepted. That's why it's very, very important to always have secret acts that nobody knows about. And nobody knows about. And it's more sincere as all. Well. You know, a lot of time when we're in front of the camera, that feeling can always creep in. You see what I'm saying? You know, so I'll, I'll, I'm just going to be real and honest. Sometimes the shaitan comes to me while I'm delivering a lecture and says, maybe just repeat that again, reword it, or maybe phrase it a little bit better so it can come out as a very nice reel. So get the clip. <laughs> You're clip farming at the moment. And wallahi, akhi, it's a jihad. Like, it's a struggle with the, with the soul, honestly. Well, it's not a bad thing to... because if it gets clipped well, then it's going to go viral and it's good dawah. No, like the shaitan, like... Oh, it's for and then you're making it more just for... Wanting to go viral, you know, it's a, it's a constant battle, do you see what I'm saying? So you constantly have to struggle with the nasi, and you wrestle with it. And the intention is very, very important. Sincerity, otherwise your action is not going to get accepted, you know? Perhaps that lady was extremely sincere when she done that. Prostitute. And we're not saying, oh, you can go and become a prostitute and just feed a dog and then khalas, and you're going to be forgiven. No, we're not saying that at all. You just don't know what Allah is going to accept. So you have to worship Allah between fear and hope. This is a very, very important concept. Right? People say Allah is all forgiving. Yes, He is. But He's also Shadeed al Iqab. He's extremely, extremely uh, tormentful in His punishment. If you do the wrong thing, yes, He can forgive you at any time, any place. You have to go and seek that forgiveness. But at the same time, you may be punished. So we worship Allah between hope and fear. There's a balance. Does that make sense? Uh, unfortunately, we hear this kind of rhetoric all the time, especially on social media. Akhi, leave him alone, man. You don't know what's in his heart. Let him go and do whatever he wants. Guy's in a haram relationship and he's flaunting his wife and boasting about it. About it and, uh, and everyone's defending him. Oh, you don't know what's in his heart. You know what I fear, Akhi? You know when the Dajjal comes out? The Dajjal? All these people are going to go and... Even though he has kafir on his forehead, still right? Which means disbeliever. Yeah. People are going to say, Akhi, you don't know what's in his heart. Yeah. <laughs> leave him, man. Like he might have a good heart. Yeah. <laughs> people are following all sorts of craziness today anyway. If people are following these liars and these deceitful individuals like online. They're going to fall for the job. Did you see the chopper? Yeah, imagine that. Imagine that. We've got all these people following him. Yeah. They're going to definitely believe in the job. I mean, I'm sorry to say it, but these people... No, are like, as, subhanAllah, I heard this hadith, I think maybe when? Over 25 years ago, right? But you know, sometimes yani, you're trying to make sense of something that's going to happen at the end of times and you hope to understand one day, bro, now. And he used to hear everyone's going to be following the Dajjal. But isn't he going to have kafir written on his forehead? Is that true? Like, in between his eyes. Yeah, it's mentioned in the hadith. It's going to say kafir. Yeah, yeah. Can that no, be a kaf, fa, and ra. Yani, huh? It will literally say kafir. It'll have the three letters, kaf, fa, and ra on there, right? Uh, which means disbeliever. Oh, he, he's disbelieved, right? Um, can that be a like satanic sign or something inside? Or like a star, uh, Wallah, this is what we've been told. We can only go off with what is exactly mentioned from the things that are from the unseen or the things that we or hasn't happened yet. And the Jal is the Mashik, the Jewish Messiah, correct? Huh? The Jal yeah, Salam is. Yani, no. And I think, is he not going to have enough forehead? Why, how, how are people going to follow him? And then when you see this chuf chuf thing, chuf chuf. Right? When you see this chuf chuf thing, chuf chuf. and you see, <laughs> and you've got people following all sorts of craziness. And believing these liars with this whole, you know, Palestinian thing that's happened and whatever have you. It's not far-fetched, honestly. It really isn't far-fetched. 
you think the end times are coming soon? I've been discussing. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt. Okay, we're, we're in the end of times now. Well, we already started? Yeah, yeah. Okay. What, do you, what are signs of the end times right now? I'll give you one of them. The Messenger of Allah said, from the signs of the hour, that knowledge will become very scarce. So all this time you had it there? You couldn't hear it? I've been going back and forth. It's okay. Yeah. So, uh, knowledge will be very scarce. Ignorance will become very widespread. Zina will become extremely uh, uh, prominent as well. And likewise, killings. Murder. Murders. And, and also women wearing clothes that are not clothes. I mean, they're, they're, they're clothed and naked at the same time. What does that mean? Meaning the clothes are so tight. That, you know, it's, uh, That's every girl yeah. in the West. That's every single girl. Not every single girl. It was, it was quite a bit, man. I mean, but not every single we can't, we can't, we can't generalize. Can you, can you give me their, their emails of the ones that are clothed? What do you mean? You mean every single gun in the West? No, 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 like, like, like a couple. I'm looking for a wife. I, want to, I think it's wife time. Bye, inshallah, may Allah make easy for you. Yeah. Huh? Do you know some good girls that, like, maybe... Oh, I Chef, I stopped hitting people up a very long time ago. You did? I feel like you'd be a good uh, matchmaker. I just thought of time. Uh, and I had some bad experiences as well where you're trying to do the right thing, but then people take what you said and they put their own spin to it and then it reaches the other person and it can end up becoming... So I've just... And then you're in the well. middle of a marriage, yeah. So you told me that he was such a great person. I just told you what was apparent to me, Ali. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> and me, I'm trying to give you sincere advice as to whether you should go for him or not. And then it reaches him that apparently I've been speaking bad about him. No, you have to be a sincere advisor. You have to mention the good phrase, right? To look out for that person. And you have to also mention the bad ones. Again, to look out for that person. You know? How do you start to look for a wife or a husband the right way? What are the good ways to approach marriage? You know, the young people out there who want to get away from this, uh, the end times. And Allah, yeah, and he, like you just did right now, you can maybe ask me to help you find a sister. I get some, I get you know? quite a bit of messages, but I, I don't know if I should trust them or whatever. Maybe if you have a sister, do you have a sister? Yeah. You can ask her to maybe uh, engage with them to see maybe what would be uh, compatible with yourself. So get my sister to go on a date with the potential no, wife? No, 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 not at all, Ali. Just like she sends over a profile. The, the reason why I'm saying go through someone else is if you're in direct contact with them, sometimes it can get a little bit can get messy. out of control, yeah. you know? And I don't want that for you. I don't want to open that door for you. See what I'm saying? One thing leads to another, and before you know it, I don't think I need to spell that out, 100%. right? Uh, there is a there is a a, a, a a marriage app that is going to go live very very soon. Tinder? No no no, no. that's oh. not that's a haram app, oh. right? Uh, it's a marriage app that I've been asked to come on board with, right? As a religious Sharia compliant guide, ensuring that it's very Sharia compliant. Mashallah. Yani, I, I'm just a consultant on that. Oh, that's great. And I said, why not? someone wants to, you know, ask me for the Sharia aspect of whatever it might be, why should I be part of it? And we've been instructed now to cooperate in good and, and piety, right? It was a wonderful project and inshallah it's going to be live soon. It's called Simply Nikah. Simply Nikah. It's not nikah live yet. Nikah means marriage. Nikah means, yeah, it means, yeah, marriage. So that's going to be live. It's going to have AI, AI features. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, it's going to have also, the Wali will have access to it. And inshallah ta'ala is going to be very Sharia compliant. So you got these marriage apps, if you join, you know, you meet someone that perhaps through the information they provided looks very compatible. Does that make sense? Well, I was wondering. And then you can maybe see them after they'll send a picture and then go meet that person. You can person. send a picture? Yeah, after that you'll be able to send the picture. Of a course, picture under the consent of the father, the wali, the one that's How much can they show in the picture? Like, what do you mean? Like, is it an ankle? Can they show wrist? No, you can see their face. Can you see hair? Wallahi, uh, this is an issue of difference of opinion. What's Wait, the Salafi see... opinion? No, no, it's not about the Salafi or non-Salafi opinion. Um, it's a fiqhi related issue. Can you see her uh, hair or not? Wallahi, there's a school of thought where you actually can. Um, so yeah.
Okay. Yeah. What do you believe? Well, I look. <laughs> trying to get into trouble. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm not curious. spoken about this publicly. Is it good? By the way, Baz actually gave the fatwa that you can see her uh-huh. hair. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> I always say to the sisters that ask me this question maybe in the first meeting, don't show your hair. But if you feel like that this is going to go forward, maybe in the second or the third meeting, there's no harm in showing your hair yet. Because the hair is very important in terms of knowing or seeing that person's beauty. See what I'm saying? Because it can go some way in affecting your decision, right? Someone soft, someone a different kind of hair, someone braids, yani, some, everyone has their flavor of what they exactly want. So I'm not the first to say this, but... Uh, is there a part in the app where you can go through a, a Muta marriage? I was with Modine in Las Vegas, huh? and he saw some, some nice girl. He's like, oh, we can go a Muta marriage, you know, temporary, and then we get, you make the Wait, you're talking about Muta right now? So Muta marriage is not allowed? No. Why not? It's prohibited in our Sharia. If you want, Muta is, for those who don't know what we're speaking about, so what's the difference between this ala kulli hal ya sneeko is to have a contract or to go to a sheikh he writes your contract they're going to be married for three hours it's three hours? three hours, four hours what does it remind you of? anyways don't spell it out but uh, okay, we're not here playing around with women okay. marry them off you have, no? it just defeats the whole uh, objective of marriage I mean, you think about it it's like trying to deceive God, like tricking him into thinking it's a real marriage. But, yeah, so, it's, so it's not allowed. You have this halal way of getting married. You know, it's very, very simple. People, I'm, I'm going to be honest, yani, they tend to overcomplicate things. You need 30,000 this and 30,000 that. and 30, okay. You see two witnesses. Yani, you need two witnesses, right? And the wali, the guardian that... Uh, it's upright, but khalas, yani. Well, what's the welly, the parent? Yani, the guardian, yani. Could be the father. If the father's not alive, it moves on to someone else. Okay. And then you agree on a mahar, a dowry, khalas, yani. Something decent that can also protect her, you know? You, he was telling me that there's uh, not all girls want a dowry. They don't all want, some just want a Quran recitation. You know, if you read Surah Al Fatiha, you can, you can get past that. No, my advice would be, inshallah, something that is substantial. Okay. Right? To have so tomorrow, if a divorce does happen, you at least have something in it, you know. How much? Well, I it, it varies from place to place, yeah. It varies from place to place and from time to time. Saudi women, what, what do you think? How much? I don't know. Okay, okay, it's not worth the conversation. <laughs> When's this app gonna start? That's great to huh? hear. When's the app gonna release? I think it's in May. I think it's in May. Okay. Okay, but are Western women the dowries less or more than Saudi women? I don't know, man. I've never asked a Saudi sister, okay, how much is your dowry? Okay, fair, fair. Huh? You might have heard through the grapevine. Oh, yeah, I can't remember, man. Okay, okay. I can't remember. I know sometimes the brothers think about it, they can be pretty expensive. He's in a better position to... Could he come? So, so how, how, what's the word for dowry? Dowry means mahar. Mahar. How much for for mahar for a Saudi girl? Around 50. Like it's different, right? The one in Mecca is different from the one in Riyadh. On the tribe, the family, the girl, everything. Is it a real or U.S. thing? No, real. Oh, mashallah. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Okay, we'll, we'll meet a couple more and then we'll, we'll, we'll let Abu Tami get going. Then. Tell him to recite um, Surah Al-Muk. Can they have it on YouTube, please? You do? You have it on YouTube? Yeah, yeah, that's why they're asking for it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Type in Surah Dumulika, Abu Taymiyyah comes up, inshallah. Okay, okay. They're a- asking to um, ask about Mad Kali's. I don't know what that, what is that? Mad, Mad, Mad Kali. You don't know what that is? And 50 to 80K seems like a lot. Wallahi, it's something that goes back to people's uh, cultural traditions and practices and it varies from place to place. So generally speaking, I wouldn't comment on a cultural practice that has become uh, the stronghold within that community because um, I'm not part of that culture, I'm not part of that tradition. I can comment on what happens in the West 
a version place where like in Africa is a lot different to over here. Over there is very, very different. And I can't apply that now and make that the rule of thumb for anywhere else. Does that make sense? It's different everywhere. I think it needs to change the battery. Okay, Chad, we'll be back in three seconds to change the battery. I don't know how much longer you want to go, but it's going up in views. It's, 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 it's been good. Are you tired? Did you Chad. In, no, no, right. We can, how long is it going on for? Um, it's like seven. Yeah. Huh? Like seven. Seventeen? No, no, seven. No, how long? How long time it will take? Ooh. Are you are hey, don't uh, show girls no, haram, bro. Haram. Haram, bro. Haram. That's haram. Don't show women on his screen. I'm doing live I'm doing this stream like this cause I need to keep this stream on YouTube cause if I won't do it then it will get deleted bro will be deleted from YouTube cause yeah this stream has a license from Arambul and that's why and Sneaker got, uh, got banned from YouTube that's why, bro, I have to. So, why? So, oh, it came, bro. Well, what's one question you think I should ask Abu Kamil that I haven't asked? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Everything. We used to be about Islam, about everything. Everything he talks about, cultural, Abu Bakr, the prophets, what's the Sunnah, Hadith. We were speaking about um, people born, having porn addiction. What's one question? Like, have you seen his speeches? That's about Umrah. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah. I think what they're referring to is the uh, Mount Temple that they're trying to construct in Masjid al-Aqsa or in the Aqsa complex. In Saudi? No, in, in, uh, in Palestine. That's what they're asking about. Oh, that okay. temple that they're trying to discuss. And the first, step to, the first step for these guys carrying out whatever they're trying to accomplish, right, is for them to slaughter the red cows. This is Jewish doctrine. Does that make sense? Uh, at the end of the day, cows? they are... I mean, they basically, what I've heard is, they've Sorry imported that, red camels from Texas. Sorry, not red camels, red cows from Texas. And they believe within their doctrine that they need to find these uh, red cows and then slaughter them on the, uh, on the holy land of Al-Aqsa. And then they'll do certain other things, you know, but that's like the first step to... Wait, so Jews believe in sacrificing red cows? I'm not exactly sure, but I've heard, Yanni. It's not something that I've personally done. Well, in New York, they sacrifice it. chickens and they, they let the blood run on the streets. So it doesn't sound... Yanni, this is, from what I've heard, is part of the doctrine. I've personally been wanting to look into it further. But either way, if they believe this, and they are now going to carry out this plan of theirs, and eventually they want to do that which is far worse, uh, might get a sandwich. Food looks good. Yeah. You're not hungry? It's a one. I'm gonna get it. Yeah, let's order something. Is it, is it, is it on now, yeah? Yeah, is is it, we're, it back on? On. we're back on. Yeah. We're back on. Can you speak about, about Palestine at all? Yeah, why not? I can ask you anything? I have it. More people are waking up a lot. Since our first podcast, I'm seeing a lot of the mainstream conservatives like Candace Owens. Shout out to her. She just left the Daily Wire. She's been very vocal about how... Is that the... The black woman, black Candace Owens, she, she's, Ben Shapiro is a raging Zionist and he's, he's a big part of what's going on. She was very vocal. Very vocal. Very vocal, right? Yeah. She's Christian, but she's close. Like, uh, let me try and get something straight, right? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But she was, using, she was using the same platform as Ben Shapiro. Daily Wire. She was, Daily, ben Shapiro owned her. Okay. She was like a slave owner. Uh, and then she's finally free. She broke the chains away from the, the Zionists. So, mm -hmm. congrats to her. And also yeah. Tucker Carlson. I've seen little clips going around. Yeah. And what, did they fall out because she was being very, very vocal? Of course, it, it goes against whatever he's trying to pro propagate, right? Exactly, yeah. Huh? And they start um, rewarding all the Zionists that are public about Israel. They start putting them on the platform. Even like liberals like Destiny, if they start 
showing allegiance to Israel, they'll put them on the platform even though they disagree about most things because they still the core value of Zionism is bigger than anything conservative or liberal. And Tucker Carlson, he also broke away the chains from the slave masters. He left Fox News and is talking about how Israel controls America. A lot of people are talking about it. Four months ago when we did our first podcast, it was still like, how much can we really say? Uh, even though I've, I've been very vocal about it, and you have too. But now people are starting to wake up. There's a, there's a mass, mass awakening happening with this issue. What do you think is going to happen? Are they going to crack down on oh, censorship? Are people going to riot? It's very, very powerful. TikTok is huge. Through the it. permission of Allah. Let me read out some stats that I came across. I remember I sent it to some of the brothers that give da'wah. Some great days. Uh, I think this will be powerful. Social media is the place to be if you want to get a message, especially to the next generation. Does that make sense? Yeah, this is what I came across, right? This article or this study. Gen Z and younger millennials are more likely to consume news from social media. With 71% obtaining news from these platforms at least daily. And 91% at least weekly. According to the American press study, it gets better. Some 44% of Gen Z's report never receiving news and information from traditional sources. Compared with 35% of younger millennials and 31% of older millennials, right? This is why it's extremely crucial. I always tell da'wah guys, right? And brothers that are graduated from Medina and different Islamic universities, we need to take over social media. We need to flood it with positive content. Yeah, bro, I'll right? do it, I'll do if it. If you don't, they win. The enemies yeah. and the devils, yeah. they're gonna like just spread wherever they're spreading Work right now. It, so this, uh, you know, this uh, wave that you see of people now waking up. Yeah, it's huge. It's through social media. It's beautiful. Right? And I, again, I, I ask a lot to guide Elon Musk, right? His platform, as you'll probably agree, is the best possible platform now in uncensored information, right? He's on our side. He just has to go and he has to go to Auschwitz with Ben Shapiro publicly so that Twitter stays alive. Like he puts on the hat and he like, he pretends to like, oh yeah. It's so have you spoken to him? I haven't. I haven't. But like. If you really talk to him, man, I swear he's like he understands what's happening. He's playing the game. Yeah. So don't show any disrespect to Elon for for kissing the, um, the Israel wall with Ben Shapiro. He has to do it, you know. I, I, I it, unless he wouldn't allow all this to happen on Twitter, he wouldn't allow these people because every time honestly, he's been a game changer. ADL gets time. ratio. Ben Shapiro get ratio every single exactly. time. My tweet, Instagram, like, I, I see that you know it gets it gets minimizing his engagements and and YouTube ha is not it has not been the same. Uh, since I started speaking about certain topics. Yeah, you got shot of them probably. I haven't been shot down completely, but you can see they they tried to minimize... Yeah, they shadow banned you. ...your engagements and um, what do they call it? Suggestions that you end up getting or... Here's what it is, man. So SubhanAllah, everything happens for a reason. Everything happens That's for a reason. Him coming at a very, very crucial time. Imagine this, right? He bought it two years later. Right? That changes the course of like, history. Imagine, right? Imagine. A lot of that which you saw happening in Palestine, a lot of that which the non-Muslims saw happening in Palestine, it happened mainly through Twitter. It changed people's yani, uh, way of thinking. Bro, it shook Biden. Let me, let me quickly read out what he said, right? Shout out to Lucas Gage, just got back on. Look what Biden said. Look what Biden said, yeah? Biden came out and said, Israel should be very careful as the world's opinion might shift. Mm. <laughs> Through what? Through social media. Through this. Through social media. Yeah. Don't underestimate, my brothers and my sisters, your activities on social media. Wallahi, it has had a I'm huge impact on how people think. Islamic. Right? Their perspectives, their worldview has been impacted. It could be Christmas. one tweet, subhanAllah, that gets you to paradise, man that changes yani, communities and a whole society, right? Alhamdulillah. Clipping might get you into heaven. Even, even Piers Morgan, like, I just... Yeah, I'm As much it. as uh, I'm a despicable individual he is, but the fact that he opened this platform for Muslims to come on and people who are pro-Palestine. Yeah. You know, so kudos for that. But I think he just shot himself in the foot, you know? He's but he, now. he allowed people to come on. And on his platform, they spread all of this. And he got humiliated. But and he got humiliated, and eventually people just left him. Yeah. And he doesn't get the views anymore. <laughs> right? He, he unintentionally yeah. woke up yeah. so many people because he got destroyed in debates by Muhammad Ajab. And I, re I really, really liked, uh, what's that guy's name? 
Flinkson, I think, is, is, is Jackson trying to... Hinkle. Yeah, the, uh, Jackson, the I white think guy. He's a, he's, a, he's a survivor, right? Oh, no. On I've been seeing some of them, subhanAllah, have very good engagement, very good points. The survivor of what? There was one who survived the Holocaust. I don't think he was on there. Maybe he was, or maybe that was somewhere else. Oh, uh, Finkelstein. Yeah, that's not what I'm saying. Finkelberg. Was he on there? I think he was, right? I think he was. Yeah, yes. Or whatever other platform that people were using. And then in most recent times, there's this other guy. He's like semi-old. What is his name, man? Is he Jewish? I think he is, yeah. And he's, he's pro-Palestine? I think he is, yeah. I think that is the one. Ala kulli hal, many guys, even Andrew Tate, he did an amazing job in his interaction with him. Ala got him. I mean. Um, and also, uh, the, the other, what's his name? The comedian guy. Owen Benjamin. Bassam, I think his name is Bassam. Absolutely tore him to shreds, yeah. Bassam, the comedian. Bassam? Yeah, yeah, Bassam. Honestly, everyone's playing a role and it makes me happy as a Muslim. But Sam Yusuf, his name was. Well, we're winning the culture so war. We're right? losing the actual war. Yeah, I don't know him. I don't know him. This guy did an amazing job. Absolutely humiliating. You know? So, um, sometimes I think guys like Piers Morgan are, are pro-Palestine undercover and they're pretending to even host these debates just to go platform people. Because you can platform people like us. Because it's lucrative for him, right? If he's going to bring on a Muslim, and this Muslim has, well, the whole Muslim community is going to be behind him, irrespective of, uh, you know, the interests of what he believes. Muslim is going to be championing this individual. He's going to get a lot of views, man. And the guy lives off views. And that's where his revenue comes from, sir. Yeah, but he loses a lot of support. But you're right. Like, uh, it's extremely important that we keep winning the social media war. Even through censorship, the fact that, um, that I'm still here kicking and thriving, it's very good. It's, it's good that we're able to win this because the truth always wins. And all these liars, these Zionists, like they're getting, they're getting exposed more and more day by day. They, they pretend to be patriots and then they they want all, all the money to go to Israel. They want Israel controlled politicians to run the country. They're not America first at all. And people are starting to really question where allegiance lies. <laughs> And TikTok has been has been really big on that too. And that's why they want to shut down TikTok. You know that, right? Because uh, they're starting to people are starting to talk about Osama bin Laden on TikTok because they're starting to uh, all these like the feminist girls are starting to realize like okay, well, why are they killing Palestinian babies? And then they start to look into Islam. They start to look into Zionism. TikTok well, has honestly, been a big well, It's been a game changer, man. It really has. What's happened this time round? Because I remember every Ramadan, the Palestinians will get attacked. And there would always be a debate. Oh no, this is from last year. Oh, no, this is not recent, right? Yeah. Every single Ramadan. But Subhanallah, now, Alhamdulillah, man, I'm really, really happy that the world was able to see. And like we said before, everything happens for a reason. Someone may turn around and say, "Why is all of this suffering taking place?" Inshallah, God willing, these people that are being massacred, they're going to get a one-way ticket to paradise for being killed oppressively, unjustly. And, the, and, and while all of this is happening, right? All these people are learning about it itself. So don't be surprised, next generation, when you see a kid with blue eyes, right? Or green eyes, blonde. Huh? Your typical American, one in two end up becoming Muslims. Right? I can't wait to see that day. We're already seeing it in some factions, but it's going to happen on a mass scale. Normally when you see a kid that looks like that, or somebody that looks like you're gonna think, Oh, he's probably a reaver. No, there's going to come a time. Yani, people who just look very, very different, like American white, blue eyes, are going to be born into this time. And I can't wait for that. We're coming to the end of times, right? May Allah Azza wa Jal guide those who have good in their hearts, man. Can if I they don't have good in their hearts, may Allah put good in their hearts. Man. Can I ask you a difficult question? It's prophesied, well, in the Quran it says that when it comes to the end times, that most people are going to die. And that the, the evil people will rule the world, and then I, I don't want to, to get it wrong, but it says in the Quran that the, the evil people are going to win, and the majority of people are going to follow the job regardless. Something like what's happening in Israel Palestine, I think you can say that, that this might be the start of the end, that this could lead to a major world war, and that, you know, if you believe that the Mashik is the Jaw, the Jewish Messiah, that maybe that he comes and obviously he's going to be in support of Israel. 
is it not inevitable that they win? All the support and all the charity, all the donations we're doing, all the dua we make for Palestine, it's great that a lot of these people become martyrs and they make it into Jannah, but isn't it inevitable that they will win? So what the Messenger Salah is they say to us is that when the hour is set, right, when the Day of Judgment starts, yeah, I mean, those who are going to be alive are the worst of people, right? So the worst of people are going to be alive at a time, and that's when the hour is going to start. None of those who, uh, upon Al-Islam, upon goodness, are going to be alive. So, yeah, I, mean, I, I see what you're trying to say, is that perhaps in conjunction with the question that you're asking, high possibility, yeah. Because there's a lot of things that are going to be happening at the end of times, right? People are going to be following the Dajjal, right? Uh, we are also waiting for Isa to arrive. He's the one that's going to be Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, he's going to be, uh, you know, killing the, the false Messiah. So there's a lot that's going to happen, right? And we have limited information that we've been given pertaining to the end of times, right? So uh, may Allah give us that which is best, you know? We want to be on the right side. You get me? I want to be on the right side because there's going to be a lot of confusion if people are getting confused right now right the truth is getting blurred in many people's circles right let's just hope that we're safe from it this is why we're told that if you hear about the Dajjal don't go to him